and then I'll get up and I'll turn it on. Yes. Modification of library. Okay. That's the only change. 
percent of that is a thousand per week. Wouldn't it be two percent of fifty two four forty nine? So that would be a thousand more. One oh four eight, but you have two oh six oh. I'm not sure what's stated in the report. He was hired at 52. The select board gave him a $1,000 increase. That was for a merit increase at that time. But the board felt that that did not preclude them from any merit, in any across the board COLA increase that anybody else was entitled to for next year. So, yes, it's more than 2% because it's 2% of what they're receiving now and not 2% of what the budgeted amount was for 2018. So the current oh. revised budget is not correct then? 52,449 is not correct? So it would be 53. They, they yes. His okay. an, well, his, so his annualized amount is 53, but it happened halfway through the year. So they gave him what would equal $1,000 over a year, but it happened midway. So that's why the budget so, figure would say that. Yeah, um, does, does anyone object to having uh, Caroline speak no, up? No. When, no. Sorry. Good. So, please. Okay. So, so the current revised budget of 52,449 is not correct. It's really 53,000 right now. But you're anticipating... If, if, if he were not to get an increase, but he were to receive his current salary annualized, that would equal 53. Um, but his budgeted amount for 2018 was 52. So it's a revised amount in that it happened midway through. But if he were to not receive a COLA increase for next year, then the budgeted amount would be 53 because he received what was intended to be a $1,000 increase over the whole, over a full year. So really the revised budget should be 53. Um, because you did 2% on that, is what you're, is what you're saying, right? Yes. No. Well, the, the intent was a 2% increase on the 53, the 53. That was the intent of the board. Okay. Right, but the 2% the of 53000 is $1,060. Then you add the 1000 that they added. But we already added the 449 so we're adding another 1000 for thousand no. plus for next year, it'll be a full thousand. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, we were going. On, I was going on the fifty-three, mm. which is what it would have been at the beginning of the year if he'd have gotten it the whole year. All oh, right. That's good. So there's still a thousand dollars. But that's the the four percent increase is from the fifty-two. The dollar change, mm -hmm. but it's still off by twenty bucks. It should be two thousand eighty. Mm -hmm. If you did four percent, it's supposed to be about uh, fifty-two. The four percent, but no, it would be four percent on the revised budget. Mm -hmm. But the, should the default budget number be the fifty-three yeah, though? No, no. Can't, no can't you can't do that. It would be fifty-two Good last year. But it it's not what was in the agreement. It's the previous year. year's budget right. plus no, any good. contractual obligations, right. less any one-time expenditures. So because there was no contract associated with that increase, um, the default is still 52. So yeah, it's a one-time expenditure. Is that well, no, it's not a one-time expenditure. It's just that it's not a contractual obligation. I, or, you know... There's this funny definition of what is a contractual obligation, but um, those things have been, um, it's typically not one, one, what one would put in a default budget. You're back to the original. So from year, from year over year, it's a 4% increase to that line. Yes, totally. Based on what we're giving them this year versus what we gave them what he had and what we gave him in the summertime, it will be a total of 4%. Um, and same comment on the following line, so it's an 11.8% increase year over year for the full-time staff line as well. The difference in that line is that there's overtime budgeted, so it's not just a percentage on the straight time. Okay. Um, do you know about how many hours of overtime it is? 
I believe it was budgeted for 130. Is I could be wrong about that, but that's the number that's in my head. Um, and how many staff members is that for? One. Select board going to give uh, job descriptions for everybody in town? What I'd like to do is, because we have a lot to cover tonight, I'd like to hold it the budget things if we could. So, I mean, yeah, it's interesting, but let's try and keep it to the budget because otherwise we're going to be picked all in the night. You know, I complain year over year we get these across the board increases, and now we're talking 10, 20, 30 percent. We have no job descriptions and no performance reviews. So I'm going to continue to complain about that as long as I'm on the budget committee. The, the, the departments who are doing this have much um, less impactful increases in their in their salary requests. Um, the police department, you know, they're down 1.3%. You know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fifty thousand. What do you plan on doing with that? The plan is to finish the heritage drive, we then pay our grind from Bear Road to the Woodlands on Sligo, and then, if there's money available, to overlay the three projects. At this point, have you gone out for bids or anything? Or no bids, yeah. No. This is based on just experience. Based on pricing of last year's materials yeah. and, and what we ran into down in the woodlands. Uh, we felt that would be, uh, uh, we should raise it up to about 25000 uh, We did get a couple other projects done with the money we had in the road budget this year that we did in house, some big patches and uh, we did in front of the fire station. I have a list of the projects we did paving. We did in house paving 85 tons of hot top, so I could, if anyone wants a copy of what we've done, I can pass that around. So, in estimating the, the likely expense to do what you want to do, are you basing it on the length of roadway, um, comparing that to the length of roadway? There's, there's going to be some, some considerable work has to be done in the section of Sligo Road where that road has to be There's no gravel on that road either. And we're going to have to do shoulder work and everything there to keep the water up from running down the road and picking up the road. So there, there's going to be more money involved there before we're done. Yeah. Again, we don't have no bid yet. I've asked for quotes on Pike and other things, and I'm going to get some different companies to give us some quotes so we can do it, you know, put it out the bid. I think that'd be the spirit's way to do it. Oh, good. Um, despite these increases for salary, you're still looking at a 5.4% decrease in your budget for next year? Do I read that right? increase. That would be the uh, transfer station section. So there's no there's no total for just highway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's 539. Okay. Got it. 
for that rate eight point eight. Sixteen thousand dollars if it's selling something. Eight eight point oh eleven. station budget, that is to say, the ones that were um, through the company and cleaned periodically. The highway department uniform line is an older line which was just for the, not rental, but purchase of hats and sweatshirts, a few items that were not to be um, <coughs> gone for the service. Um, so it looks like a lot more of an increase in highway because none of it was in the highway, really. They're not doing as much of the purchasing hats and stuff outright, um, but they are increasing, um, they're splitting adequately what wasn't split before. It was all in the transfer station. But the, the transfer station didn't go down at all. It went up. So the rest of that just speaks to what he was talking about with more people who are wearing them, and um, I think they have more pieces per person than they did for the seasons. We made it mandatory for the transfer station employees to wear the uniforms. Uh, we had, I think, three sets, or three different sets of uniforms for individuals that didn't even wear them. Um, we made it mandatory because the new uniforms we have are very similar to my coat, which is back there. Um, it's got the reflective stripes on them. So our shirts have the reflective stripes. And if you put a coat on, that has the stripes. It means they don't have to wear a vest. So they're always visible. So it's more of a safety thing as well. Charlie, you look like oh, yeah, I've got a question. Okay, in the transfer station, your attendance, you want three people Monday and Wednesday and four on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Now, does that dollar amount equal this? 
It should. Okay, yes. then how are you going to do the bailing? I thought you wanted to do that during the off time. We can do it on the off time or we can do it while we have the people there. Yeah. Um, right now, we're down one person. We have two people for Monday and Wednesday and three on Saturday. Yeah. So, um, also, we can do the bailing. We don't need to necessarily need to bring someone in. Okay. We've already got us in house. Okay. So it doesn't have to be someone from the transfer station. I just want to make sure you was yeah. covered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. What's the difference between the equipment and the vehicle repair and maintenance lines? Um, you see, there's a $5,000 increase in equipment. What is that uh, slated for? We're trying to catch up on, by doing the in-house project, we need more tools to do our jobs. And we, we raised up a little bit, we purchased, we need some paving equipment that we don't have in-house. You know, a lot of the hand tools, wheelbarrows, etc. Uh, we are in, well that's in a separate line, would be the line strength. I think part of that, no, that part of that money is for the, uh, Paint the paint so we can do our own line striping. The 15000 Part of that 15 Yeah, part that extra $5,000. The paint machine is over $4,000. And we can do the painting in house ourselves. The line striping? Mm -hmm. The parking, the, 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 the crosswalks and stuff, mm -hmm. that can be done in house. So you're buying a line striper out of that? Yes. That's the intent. And how much is that? It's over about $4,400. Is that for the whole line? Or is it? And I believe the paint is probably in the line striping line, is it? Maybe in the $1,500? Yeah, that's, that's in the paint only is in the line striping line. Where's the vehicle? Huh? Where's the, where's the, um, the machine? That would be in the uh, equipment plant. The increase of five thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. That will give us an opportunity to paint the lines more often and as needed. And then, if we have a, if we do a paving project that we've paved over us a crosswalk, we can go back and repaint it and you know have your stock lines painted where they belong and stuff as needed. What did it cost then to sub that out? You paying four thousand dollars a year. To, is what was in the budget before I started. And then you had the one time they came around and in past histories that where I've worked in the past where you had companies come in and do it, they're not putting down nowhere near the thickness of paint you have so the paint will last as long as the end. They can end up coming back more often. This last year nothing was done this past year right, other than what we did when we borrowed a machine. How many people do you have uniforms for? How many people do you have uniforms for? In the highway, we have three. And in the transfer station, all the employees. All the employees in the transfer station. So, um, it's about six employees? Six, yeah, and then possible seven employees when we get back up to full staff. I've got a question on brush chipping. You're going to do that in-house or you're going out? We attempted to do it in-house this year and they uh, got behind us and we, we weren't getting the guys to come in and do it. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to come in and chip brush, so we decided to go back and put it back in and send it back outside. If we can do it ourselves in-house, I think we'll try, but we want the option to be able to right. oh, okay. get it done outside. So and, a, I know that the new crew doesn't want to do the work. As far as chipping, the new employees. No, they actually are they don't want to do quite interested in doing it. So no. We also had a very wet summer, oh, which affected trying to get it done. Well, you got well, problems so. with it being too hot or too cold. Exactly. Yeah. I don't understand so, that. Yeah. 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 I mean, we we got way behind on it in the first in the yeah. beginning, and that's and just didn't keep up with it after that. Yeah. Just didn't keep up with it. So was that an estimate from the contractor? That four thousand. Oh, 3500 that's what, yeah, we paid that the, so we had uh, last year. the last two years ago we got yeah. done. 
or last year we got to put it up this season. We didn't raise it, we just kept it at what it was, and he killed do whatever we can get in for that cost or, you know, depending on how much we have. So I see that there is almost a $14,000 increase in vehicle repair and maintenance um, from what we've spent so far this year and to next year. What are you anticipating for repairs and maintenance? Well, the vehicle, the fleet's getting older, and um, we uh, we actually were over we're over on that 15 this year. Oh, so that, that's not an accurate figure then? No, it's not this last quarter. So th these are the only 15 feet? Why is that? That's as far as we got. Oh, we can't get that at QuickBooks? Of course we can. We it's all about time. issues. There's, there's a lot to be done. Right now. So we had a uh, the newest truck, the, well, the biggest truck, ended up having had springs all replaced on it this year, uh, and, and the set of tires on the front of it. So you know how much we've spent so far? How much we've spent this year? Uh, about sixteen thousand, I think, right now. I think we're about sixteen. Um, offhand, I wouldn't know, but we can get back to you with that. Okay. So, and you're expecting the same kind of repairs for next year? Again, it's, uh, it's the fleet's not getting any nowhere, so we, we can't we, we gotta anticipate the increase in the prices, and, uh, you know, that's why we put it up. I'd rather have it, the money there to repair, to repair a truck if we need to. On the equipment account in your um, in the sanitation, what's the one thousand seven hundred and fifty? Because I know you're purchasing outright the um, baler, so when it's not going to warrant because there's money left this year. Um, it would be on page eight, third line down. In purchasing, in purchasing the new baler, it won't have to be done immediately. The debt will have to be serviced as well throughout the year, so the towards the end of the year. So it's the it's, it's the amount of money to serve all the fluids, change all the fluids, to service all. Which is, that'll give us what four balers? Four? Yeah, that'll give us four balers. Okay. So it's seventeen. So it's not really equipment; it's just maintenance. It's maintenance. Yep. So. So it should be maintenance. Okay. So the roof surfacing um, number, is that what we spent to date? That is the annual total. Um, and any <coughs> estimates for um, three hundred and fifty thousand that's being proposed for this next year? Or is that a guess? Is that a guess? Yeah, that's that. That that was an estimate. It's not just going to be resurfacing. I mean, we're going to end up doing ditch work and stuff on Sligo Road to keep the water in the side of the road instead of running down the road and tearing up the road. So until they get in, there's a lot of ledge there. We don't know if there's going to be blasting. Etc. Get into last, and that's going to bring the price up, and that could eliminate doing a lot of other things that we want to do. Um, but so you said it's just a guess. That's a guess. Yes. Based on what was done last year. Right. So. And you have a certain amount of work that you anticipate doing. It's an educated guess. It's exactly. You have a quantity, rough quantity of what you want to do, and you have some pricing. Right. Based and, on the we're looking at. We get some culverts to replace on Sligo on the further end of the road, and that's going to be, have to be resurfaced also as we take them out. We're not not in the section that we're planning on paving this year, but there's three or four culvert, cross culverts that go across Sligo Road. They're going to have to be replaced. We're going to do that in house, but they're still going to have to be in our budget. But don't we have a capital for culverts? We do, but this is something you're doing on your own, right? Right. This is yeah. yeah we're not going to be finding but these are just culverts that we're going to replace ourselves that are. Again, the whole length of Sligo Road, the water is running on above the road, 
instead of down the ditch line. So we're going to be doing the ditch work and putting new culverts in it where they cross the road to, to eliminate the problems we've been having down there with the road basically falling apart. Um, do we have, um, we obviously have the, the backhoe to do That's that. That's correct. Um, and we have the, um, the staff that's skilled to do that work as well? Yep. Can you talk about the 5.1% increase in uh, salaries for attendance? Sure. What's the, what does that end up being across the board raises um, for those people? I don't believe there was any raises that were was approved for so it's more hours. any of the attendance. It's to add the extra person. Not more hours. Okay. Yeah. The, the starting rate was also changed from ten fifty to $11 an hour. I mean, that was approved at the budget. I believe it was calculated to be that. My, my understanding is that I'll be okay. getting 2%. I but don't think it was calculated in this number. We'll, we'll check on that. I mean, we have two people that have been there less than six months, and one person has been there several years. On their anniversary of a year, or do you do it annually? No, they do it at the annual. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is the new t telephone system working out that you're using the one? We've eliminated the telephone line at the transfer station. We're using the same line now at at the uh, highway line. So the 420 that's in here is for? I think our hopes is to use it for internet. Right, and to get the internet yeah. into there so we can run that computer. Right now we're running wireless and we want to eliminate the wireless internet. Okay, so it's internet now. Yeah, we have one computer, his computer. Well, we have one plug-in internet uh, device. So if he wants to use his computer, he plugs a little internet thing in and can go online. Right, and so when it comes time for me to do work on the transfer station side, I have to run over, unplug his, bring it over, plug it in the line. If we had internet, we'd be live all the time. So. And it doesn't, it's not, we lose it half the time. A lot of times it would be uh, wireless. Yeah. So we it's like it. a cell phone thing that plugs in there. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine if you're out on the road somewhere, but we haven't found a need for it on the road. I know this place hasn't spent any money, but that was done in the summer, and there's still no money spent? Because they build late, but oh. it was built and it billed, and it was slightly over the 1500 It was like 1570 or something like that. So that would have been in the final quarter? Correct. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the, um, the $2,500 increase in supplies? Are we on highway or on? Highway. It's at the top of seven second line. It's two years ago, it was three thousand, and now it's two plus times. Here, when you pass the holes in, the 
stuff. It's, it's paving, a lot of it's paving supplies and cleaning supplies that we need for that. So we wait for the uh, saw? We wait for us to be cutting saws that mm -hmm. end in some white dollars a piece when you, when you cut hot dogs. So all that stuff is, is getting up there. It's, again, you know, we, we're doing a lot more cutting and hot dogs and doing the, these projects ourselves. So it, it's things that we probably, you probably hadn't seen in the budget before. Um, no, no, I'm just concerned. I, mean, I, mean, I know these numbers aren't real accurate, but it's over a $10,000 increase between those two lines um, for supplies and equipment. You know, we're going from about 10000 based on, you know, Q3 to 22000 Right. According to that is machine, paint machine. Mm -hmm. And then we have to buy the saws, you know, the blades and stuff like that. Again, it's stuff that wasn't done, being done before. And we're, we're using these blades and cutting the hot dog and, you know, so, I'm, and so we put the money in there because we're trying to do more projects this year. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game. So, for example, you guys were able to do the shoulder work at, at uh, Winsorland. Right. Which would have been contracted out. We say in doing the... On, uh, in the woodlands, we did the project, the uh, shoulder work myself. I gave us a price of fifteen thousand dollars. We did it for the price of gravel, of three thousand dollars. So there's a twelve thousand dollars savings there. Uh, but if I may interject, that required you to outfit a truck with your contraption to put shoulder, um, gravel from the truck into the shoulder. So that's where it would. That's where a project like that hits supplies. So he saved money because we didn't use the contractor. But it was it was just gravel. But also sometimes doing things in house requires building something that, to make it happen. I guess that's the point I was trying to make. Is yeah. that we're adding capabilities because these guys are do more. We're doing more in house. We're saving money overall. Um, but it's, it requires that we have the equipment to do it. I guess is what I'm hearing. I mean, I get a list of another list of projects that we have done. If you want to, besides the paving, you know, the shoulder work and other, you know, we replaced a lot of stop signs. Instead of buying new stop signs, we replaced 25 stop signs at half the cost of what it cost us for the stop signs, and that was all done in house. We acquired a roller at no cost in the town, which we got given to us. It works. It does the job. As much as we're going to use it. All it requires is fuel. Uh, to buy to rent a roller for these projects would have cost us three four hundred dollars a day. So we figured there's some cost savings there. We may do some maintenance on this machine occasionally, and that's going to be part of the maintenance. Uh, we fabricated equipment to keep our backup equipment so we can have a plow uh, on a backhoe now if uh, we uh, break down. Last year we had last on we were down to one truck and uh, so we decided to make a, bra a plow frame for the backhoe so we can put a plow in the truck that's broke on the backhoe and continue to plow these streets. There's several different things that we have done to save money uh, for the town and, and our plans are to continue doing that. The project the fire station was supposed to be was quoted at ten thousand dollars. We did the project of the fire station for less than two. That we're grabbing the, the ramp in front of the fire station. That's digging out the hot top and digging out some of the graveling, adding new gravel. So there's a whole list. I mean, we can take. No, no, I, I'm just going to suggest one thing that, that may be beneficial is I understand, we understand what you're saying. Um, you know, if you pay $10,000. For equipment to save thirty thousand dollars overall, then it's well spent money. The best thing I can say is exactly what you said: it was when you when you have to modify stuff like that. You know, modify the truck you're talking about. That's an extra five hundred dollars. You you record that, and then you have a maybe a spreadsheet or something where it says, you know, if we had Pike come in and do this job, it was seventy five thousand dollars. We spent an extra two thousand on equipment and whatever on labor, and we ended up saving the town fifty thousand dollars. And lots of those examples, in my opinion, will benefit equipment down the road to get. Does that make sense, Kim? Mm -hmm. So what you, I understand what you're saying, having a good time like this is just obviously you know, going forward. The best thing to do is 
all the equipment we buy and stuff, how it saves the town money, yeah, is the I, best I, way to portray and, it. And I apologize for that. No, I don't apologize. This is my first time as being worry about management. It. And of course, I get a little nervous when I get talking in front of people. No, no, I'm just trying but, to. Uh, no, I'm, doing great. I'm trying to explain it to the best of my ability. You're doing, you're doing you're fine. Doing this, I got a call. Some, I'd some like to thank stuff. you too for all the work you've done. Just the uh, just a, two or three weeks ago, Pike had what two ton of tar, yeah, yeah. and he says, "Wow, oh, I got a place for that," and that didn't cost nothing. Yeah, we paid, the, he had front, we paid the front of the highway garage with uh, with tar that was left over from a project mm -hmm. they didn't company did in town. They asked us we if we had four holes to fill. I said, "Well." I said, you know, I asked them how much they had. They had four ton of hot top left. That oh, one been, you know, $10,000 dollars project paid in front of the highway garage. Could you pass you know, that so it was just, uh, you know, finding it, being there at the right time. You know, they, really you come into a select board meeting on a night, and they say, "Oh, we needed this much money to fix something, but we did the rest of it on our own because we just need, needed the material." They do an awful lot of work for two people. So the total, total overall, 11.7% overall, the budget went up from 18 to 19, correct? Mm -hmm. And if we're if down the road, if we can really equate that to tooling, new tooling to save money, then it's, it, I'm just going to get your opinion too, Ken, but that seems like it would be men and well spent if that, in, in case of the fact. Mm -hmm. I mean, time will tell as, time, as the next year comes up. And, but, the town report would be a great place. Of course, almost 50% of that is because you're going up on paving of the roads, 25,000 of the 62. Yeah, trying to get more projects done. Yeah, I don't know, I know. We did run it, I mean, the, the Woodlands project and Heritage Drive does not have adequate gravel under the road, and that's, again, what that cost uh, has changed when we did the project. And you'll notice in the past on the uh, money spent on the roads that uh, we used uh, we were only going to reclaim which run from Sligo up to the original uh, the first cul-de-sac in which run. As soon as we put the machine and started reclaiming the road, we noticed there was enough gravel on the roads and this was going to continue to be a problem. The project was 30 years old. Apparently, Jay just did passing and stuff in there since it was there. But we probably expect, after speaking with the contractors and uh, the people, it was best to put the gravel in the road and reclaim the whole project instead of part of it. So you'll notice that we, we added 2,000 ton of gravel to that project to bring that road up to, up to today's standards. Originally, it was only going to be ground and one layer, of, uh, I mean, we had put two layers of pavement on that first section and then overlaid the rest of the project. And we decided, to, after speaking with the select board, we decided to reclaim the whole project and, you, and just do the uh, base coating in for this year. It does not have to be done as, you know, we could get two or three years on the base, but they, you know, they said it would be smart to get a second coat on that before, you know, and then before it goes too far down the road. So we decided to do that, and the same problem is on Heritage. When we started doing Heritage Drive, even there was a section of Heritage Drive 200 feet long that was over a uh, landfill. We pulled out construction debris, we went down six feet, and pulled out construction debris in the road, and had to add all new gravel in that section, which eliminated doing 90% of that project last summer. We got two different sections of 400 feet ground down and added gravel and revoke that those sections with anticipation of finishing that project this year, mm -hmm. grinding, reclaiming the rest of the project and adding gravel and then base coating it in and hopefully get the uh, top layer on. Again, that's why we would put in 300 the uh, higher amount on the pavement. So you've got heritage in this budget as well as, as the overlay at we're hoping uh, if you can get it. If, 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 you, get if, it. If, if you run into trouble on Sligo and you have to spend more money than you And we can put off, you can put, put off. a top coat on all these projects until next year. Yeah. We need to get Sligo rebuilt because that section between uh, Bear Road and 
the wood, woodlands is uh, the water. The water is running right down the middle of the road. We can't even keep coal past black up on the roads. And that same thing's happening actually the whole length of the road. But obviously that's not going to happen. We take care of that. The other thing is if we opened up the Sligo Road at the Culbert and uh, where the road was narrowed down due to the washouts, we taught the engineers and they gave us permission saying that it was okay to move the barriers back and eliminate some of them so we could get full traffic back down to Sligo Road. That's been done. So, yeah, eliminating the cost of replacing the train the culvert too. That was supposed to be $425, got uh, $25,000 to replace the culvert, which won't have to be replaced. He said the culvert's in good shape. He said, but we should reinforce the uh, banks on both sides of the, on the north side of the culvert. We stabilize it with the uh, riprap and the rock and clean it out some so the water flows properly. Eliminates the chance of washing out the edge of the road. It's going to be a cost of about twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars to do that project. Yeah, that's a big, a big difference. So in the past, um, Suzanne had provided us with kind of a plan, a project plan for expenditures. We haven't um, sat down with the board this year to do the. The road, as it was towards the end of the year with the budget, when they were getting ready to do budget, so we were planning on sitting down right after the first of the year to go over what our plans after the road. Can we have that before our budget workshop so we can go um, and then, uh, what is that? 2nd. January 2nd. Yeah, I, I just have a problem dumping money into the budget without really knowing where it's going to. Or it doesn't meet until the third. Okay. The previous list would be really pretty accurate. It's just that, that that those projects are taking two years instead of one year. So the list is subject to change according to the board's priorities. But you know what you have is really the most accurate version. Sorry, Ed. Well, I was going to say I've been around when we approved uh, you know, the uh, heritage and so forth, and theoretically they were being built to. Uh, optimum standards that and I don't think they changed that much in the last no. few years. No, you're, you're, you're probably right. The standards right. have changed somewhat. But the problem was, you know, <coughs> when, when I was one of the guys that approved that, we assumed that they were putting in what should be put in, and it was never put in, you know, and building over, building over that dump up there which we didn't know anything about it. They just went ahead and did that. And that was the private contractor, of course. And then, of course, the, the, right, the, the, well, several times we spent lots of money partially filling in that hole. That was a pretty big hole originally. Yep. And, and, was, and, and deep. Yeah. And, and But we, when we approved those roads, we didn't have any requirements that some engineer would go through and specify exactly what was done and so then that when those roads were bid, we would have had it built according to standards and if they weren't built according to standards, the town would have been in a position to do it. Right. So you can blame me for approving something, but at that, but we did, didn't have any requirements that some engineer go through and specify exactly what they put in there. So well, we're going to put 20 inches of some kind of gravel and stuff in, and that's plenty according to standards. Well, they just didn't put it in there. And then you don't find out about it for 10 years or something like that when it starts falling apart. But we can go back, but we don't have any standards that right. it was built to. So it really seems like part of building new roads or running really new roads, you've got to have somebody an engineer that you can take, uh, take from the court on. And, and if you're not watching these projects, with, there's nobody on over, overseeing the project, things are happening on, on a daily basis. You know, it's, <coughs> if you don't have a, if, if we don't have a full-time uh, inspector, you know, you got a part-time inspector and stuff like that, but they're working every day on these projects, and that can happen anywhere. You know, it's... 
unfortunately, that was 30 years ago, and that's nothing you're going to do about it today. No, well, I'm just saying that right. uh, from now forward, right. yes. at least we need some <coughs> oversight. In, oversight there that uh, can give us some teeth. Yeah. Even if you come back five, ten years later, and we find that there was not put adequate underage under there, that we could require them to rebuild the road back to the original standards that they had agreed to. But we don't. We, but you gotta have that all planned in, and know who's gonna uh, inspect it beforehand, mm -hmm. and so forth. And then, and it's in, uh, who's gonna pay for it? Yeah. It could still be inspected, and the guys could cut corners. But if they were required to put in this according to Engineer X, and we, we could go back and do something by it. But I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you, Ed. But I think it's also a uh, probably a select board discussion, or so we probably ought to shift back to the, to the budget. But I totally agree. Someone should be inspecting these projects to make sure we're getting what they what they promise. Um, Frank, you had a question. I was just going to ask, what do we have in place so we now? And maybe it's, this is the wrong place, but I was going to ask, what do we have in place now for the projects that we're doing to assure that they were done right? What's the, what is the check and balance system? You, you should be seeing what they're putting in for grounds. You know, I mean, if they're just doing, digging out a road and then putting in base, bank run gravel and stuff, that's not an adequate base for the road. You know, it's, you got to keep an eye on what's going on. It's, that's the whole problem. So, ba so basically right now, it's, it's more, it, it's more, you know what they should be doing and you're watching them. Yeah, I mean, you're watching and seeing what's going on. On that job on Woods Run and on Heritage, either he or I or both of us, we're right there. But are there are there like specific you know documents that say this is how we're going to do it, and they have to follow? We know what we ask. We know what we ask for for base yeah. for hot top, and we're visually watching them. And they have a they have a test rod they put in. And we're watching it to make sure yeah. it's coming out. What thickness? You know, yeah. What happens now? Ten years from now, when the X road new road you put in. Or Renovate and start to fall apart. You, both of you guys are retired, and and uh, how do we have that check? When well, you go look at it, and you say on mm -hmm. June 27th, I inspected it and it was put in yeah. this way. So, and 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 when you're long gone, we yeah. still got that document True. on record. If we don't have, I just think we that not much you can do. I had the same problems that guys 10, 20 years before me, we had things that they didn't put anything under the roads. Yeah. But there was no documentation or nothing. And the guys that was involved in that were long gone, retired, died, whatever. And so you you got to have the documentation on file somewhere where we can go back and pull it out and see that you signed it or whoever the inspecting officer was that day, they signed it. And we got documentation, and that way we can go into court or whatever. We need to know, know that whatever we have, we'll stand up in court too. And not just have him to sign it. He didn't sign right or whatever. It's still not going. But that's that's been a problem for every time I was around here. That a lot of stuff wasn't done right, but there was not much you could do about it at that point except pay whatever it cost to get it back up to. Yeah, I think it's minimal. Problem across the across the industry. But, uh, any other questions on specifically for the highway no, department? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to apologize in advance um, for offending you. Um, I would like to see more of a plan around this budget before we go to budget workshop. Um, I just have a problem. I mean, you admittedly are a first-time manager, and you now have the biggest budget in town. Um, so handing over almost a six hundred thousand dollar budget, I think needs more of a plan before I can buy into it. So I ask. The, um, what are the chances that, that that's? I guess is that a question that we're coming from from Kim? Is that a question that we're coming is coming from the entire committee? As long as you're now, it's coming from Kim. But it's a good point she's bringing up. So. I guess it's worth discussion. Just what's the likelihood that we're going to get a... Yeah, that's the first question I have. 
course not hard. I mean, he obviously has some a plan in mind. He didn't just throw just these outline numbers. What the, what's the, right. what the right. items are yes. and sort of a, what the estimate is for each item. Yeah. yeah. Estimates we may not get right away. So, uh, again, I can get a call in to these two companies, come and look at them, and we'll see what we can do for getting the yeah, estimate. If it's, well, if it's your estimate, you can, you can say but, that. You know, I mean, well, I think she wants that. a detailed plan of the projects that you're saying or the equipment that you're buying. Doesn't necessarily have to be the exact dollar it's going to cost you, but it's saying this is what we're. And she has a very good point. We should need, we should have that in writing so then down the road you're going to know what you had on that plan and what didn't get done for one reason or another, possibly ran out of money, and it would carry over to the next year and then whatever additional. So I'm um, I'll bring it up. And we'll work so with the essentially. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, unless you're just throwing dollars into these buckets as, as a slush fund, there should be some thought behind it. Yeah, agree. Okay. And I think there, well, I think there is. Well, his presentation to the board, there was, but nothing that we have been writing to agree to you. So we will we'll put it more down in documentation for you guys to have that. Thank you. It wasn't just handing him money and saying do it the next yeah. why. That's, that's not how it works. But. Understood. <laughs> okay. So I think that's... I mean, there is a, a lot of ditch work that needs to be done in this town. It hasn't been done in a long time, which is mm -hmm. causing a lot of the problems, too. Yeah, we need to talk We're about slides. Slides for one, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks, guys. You know, so that's... that's uh, uh, do you Thank have anything you. else on the transfer? No. no. I think all set. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Transfer station all set, or you want any more questions? Oh, one quick question on the transfer station. And how many hours a week do you put in the transfer station? Do I put it over there? Yeah. So, just ballpark in. Probably four anyway, oh. minimum. I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm bouncing between the. No, I know that. No? Yeah. No, I'm just I, trying to get an idea. Yeah, yeah. I know because you're um, the manager there. Yeah, it's probably more than that, but it's hard to calculate in yeah. a way because I might go over there for 20 minutes, oh. you know, and check and see how they're doing in one of the buildings and, you know, answer some questions and come back over to the highway in another couple hours and then go back over there for another hour or. A, and, given, and then making phone calls as far as... And on a uh, given day, you might have only one guy there, so you go spend... Yeah, I, yeah in which case, like, yeah. if I have someone out or someone I'm in class... Yeah, and someone in class, yeah. then I'm, I'm the filling guy. Yeah. So, whether it's during the week or on the weekend. So, uh, okay. half the time on my way home on a, on a Thursday sometimes, or on a Wednesday, I'm calling our haul company, Triano, for yeah. my truck, and you know, ordering the truck to come in and haul the containers and... Things of that nature. So but one quick follow up on this. It's related to budget, but it's not. When are we going to get done with single stream? Good possibility within the next two to three weeks. Okay. okay. Uh, tomorrow's project and Friday's project. We've ordered the we've ordered the lumber okay. to make our bins. And one of the one of the things that we had to do is get down to Sligo Road and remove some of the barriers that were yeah. down there. Those are Jersey barriers, which yeah, are yeah. wide on the bottom and they kind of come up narrow. Mm -hmm. They make a perfect bin divider. So we've got enough of those that we were able to pull out of there and leave enough on, on Sligo to protect what needed to be protected. They're at the, they're at the shop now, and with a little bit of luck, they're going to be in place. Uh, maybe by the end of this week, I'm really hoping by the end of next week, uh, get them in place. We're going to get the walls built between them, uh, build the walls in the shop, take them out there and install them. And what, what my plan is is to have a single screen bin still there so we can for the for, for a week or two so we can bounce between the two yeah we can those we can get trained to use the bin so we'll, we'll do that the other one will be there just to fill in and then we'll go full stream and it should work out pretty well this is another project that they do in house with just parts mm. yeah i mean we're both pretty decent carpenters so we can we can build things like this uh, we went to uh, we Middleton Lumber today. Uh, we got approval from the Board of Selectmen Monday night to purchase the lumber. So as we're, we're sitting there going through our, our list, and you know, two by fours, two by sixes, looking at uh, Texture 111, for instance, which is $40 a sheet, and we also asked, well, how much is pressure treated plywood? It was $20, $22 a sheet or something like that. Like, okay, change that plan and, you know, so use the, the cheaper material, but I think it's a better material, you know, where it's pressure treated. So, 
Uh, everything that's going to go up down there eventually will be painted anyway. And then another thing down the road, I might as well throw this out there. Um, these bins are going to sit there open, open air. They really need to have a roof over them. So that's something for next year's, I think we've mentioned it to the selectmen, uh, try to build some sort of a roof structure over them, uh, over the whole area where the... You're not bailing snow. Yes, yes, you're not bailing snow. <laughs> you know, or you're not getting your product wet. For instance, um, you know, if you take a, a bale of wet, you, you know, you bale a bale of uh, metal, for instance, uh, cans, and it's wet or plastic. Uh, you know, when it gets to wherever it's got to go, and they find out that it's 20% water, that's not going to fare well for us. So it needs to be covered. The other thing that needs to be covered is the tires by state law. The tires are supposed to be covered, so they're not a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So these are all things that you, you know, I wouldn't have thought of, but fortunately we're forced to go to this class and have a certificate that says that we are transfer station uh, attendants, and that's part of the class. Is learning all that sort of thing too. So, um, just one quick question for Carolyn. Um, the full time staff um, line is that salary or hourly? Are you talking about highway? Yeah. Um, it's hourly, okay. which is why there's overtime calculated in there. That's it. Seriously. <laughs> this time, that's it. I think I'm the staff. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. 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 Good night. Good job, guys. Sorry, Frank. You didn't do it. Yeah, so we got yeah. clerk coming to water, too. I don't like the sound of that. Uh, yeah. Hey, Kate. Sam's coming into the firing squad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a warm job. I do have some changes to my budget. I think you all have that. It would, it would be whatever's in the town's budget. Is that what that is? Um, it's what I submitted to Caroline. Is so there we, one for town clerk? Yeah, it would just be the, on the budget line on the first page. She doesn't make the line the last she, just, she just has her. I just yeah. have mine. Yeah, well, okay. What page is the okay. Was Staten on the bottom of page one? Bottom one. Last line. Oh yeah, I see a ton Hello, of Hello. You guys are really committed. We're just we should be committed. We're just committed. <laughs> 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 At least we can agree on that. Right. <laughs> just yeah. getting started. So, uh, I guess I have uh, to see where you guys have questions. Um, I will start with the change that I made. Is I don't think I'm going to order another voting booth. And that's because um, I watched the last election, and people tended to sit and go to the cardboard ones than to go to the booths. I think it's going to be more comfortable. And now that we're SB2, we're looking at three, I think, both sides of a ballot, three full ballots. So it's going to take longer for people. And I just, I don't think people are going to stand. I think that, I mean, the cardboard ones are crazy cheap, and I'm just going to put up more tables. Some people still feel the need to go in a booth, but the majority of the people were sitting. So that would be a decrease of the $700 yes. off from your budget? Yes. So that would be a bottom line decrease of $700? Yeah. And then the other thing, I took a couple of things out. Uh, the training, I'm not going to go to a waste of my time. I'm supposed to go to one spring training a year to keep my being a New Hampshire town clerk, but I don't see anybody enforcing it. And it's really a waste of a day. So, I mean, it's not much more than nothing new, you know? It's not like I'm learning anything. I don't see any major on it. 
No. Well, so I have that in the mileage, which I don't get or use. And then the other thing is there is a really neat new program out for DMV, and it's with Avatar. So I was hoping to um, get that program, but now the board isn't really happy with Avatar right now, and they're meeting with them next Monday. I was hoping that if we still maintain them, next year might be a better year to ask them to reduce the price of their program because they're already here in town. May I ask, why, may I ask why the board's not happy with Avatar? It's on their contract last night. Yeah, the one-year contract. The one-year contract. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, they've gone up. They've gone up on their prices. Right. But um, they explained, they came and talked to us last night. They explained why they had to go up on their contract, and we accepted this explanation and signed the contract. Okay. But for one year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was apprehensive to. How much is it? It's like 10000 for the program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. EMV is, they're advancing a lot in the programs. So I'm kind of, I want to wait it out till somebody gets. A really good one. I mean, they have them there where you can scan everything. So, you don't so have to so type it in. Something you might consider next year's budget, but I think this next year. year's. Yeah, and, and it, the Avatar one is really good, but I just wanted to see what we ended up doing with them. Mm -hmm. Because I, I personally saw an enormous amount of mistakes after the um, revalve with them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't think, I mean, Andrew found more errors than uh, anyone. Quick question about sure. voting who? Notice it was budgeted for seven hundred and cost nine twenty five. You know why? Yeah, he actually the guy I deal with I always buy the dented or <laughs> the <laughs> display model. There you go. So I always get the reduced price. But you wouldn't he's, he's saying you spent more than you spent price. more this last time. Spent nine twenty five on this current budget. In the current year. No, I don't think it was that much. Was it? Yeah. What yeah. Is it That's oh, what you know what? I think the curtain. I think we had to order the curtain after the fact. They have uh, these arms with curtains on them. I think that was a couple hundred dollars. The booth itself, we got the chipped one or something for 700 But it's going to be the curtains. Okay. That's been going on in the budget committee for a few meetings. Oh, oh yeah. You actually emailed me. Um, what? You could have emailed me. <laughs> what? Well, you don't email. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, well, somebody else could have. Um, I did want to, I mean, I, I'm open to any questions about the proposed budget. Because I did want to talk to you about, and I did go to the board, about how much more the elections are consuming my time versus the pay. And um, even the board didn't really understand that some of the times that, a lot of the times, that I'm preparing for an election is not during my usual hours. Now that we have SV2, um, I don't think we'll ever be able to hold an election here again. So when I was here in the office, I could set up and do things. And now that it's at the Legion, I have to you know, set a whole nother four or five hours to get down there to set up. But the the whole election process in general is just keeps continuing to climb with regulations. You know, to do an absentee, for instance, I had 70 absentees at the last election. I have to enter in the state system six different entries. The person comes in, they fill out a form, I have to enter it in. Then I have to mail it out, I have to go back and enter it in. Then the person mails it back, I have to enter when they, you know, it's a, it's a long process. So just the absentees alone, not to mention setting up in the uh, hours that were required to be here. I don't even think most people know that when we have any federal election, I have to be here on Saturdays. It's called uh, UOCABA. I have to be here in case somebody in the military faxes, emails, or mails in um, a request for an absentee ballot. And that involves a couple of Saturdays, but it's not something that anybody would know because I'm here. But there's just a great deal of hours. And 
So Suzanne had asked me to keep track of my hours for one election, and I did. And if I were getting paid my hourly rate, it would have been like six, seven hundred dollars an election. So I have to come up with a way that I can compens be compensated, whether it's an hourly rate or upping my stipend, because it just consumes so many hours. And it's my own fault, because for years I've been masking it by just getting it done, because I want the election to be perfect. And then I figure I'll take the time off, but now... Is it know, something that volunteers can help with? I'm just asking. I have, I've had, in fact, this, this past election, I got the most help I've ever had. The uh, highway department was exceptional. And then one of my supervisors, who's retired, helped me. But, like, Andrea's going to be here to watch the window, so I can go down and do that. But I used to try to back my time out, but now it's getting harder and harder to do that, to get out of the office. How many hours do you think you invest in the election process? I'd say 60 in an election. Um, and that's just preparing for the election? Preparing the day of and the day after. There's always... And, you know, it fluctuates. Since I've been here, I had four elections. I think the first year I started. Yeah, we had four and a recount, and then it dropped to one, and then I had three elections, and in 2020 I'll have four. So there's a real, you know, just running the office 20 hours a week is enough, and it's really 25, and it has been for a long time, but again, I've masked it because that's my work ethic, and I just get it done. So I've started to keep track of the additional hours. Um, it's things that nobody in town would ever know. The printer for the state, the DMV, the fuse one. It took me three days to get the state down here to fix it. So it was a full-time job just explaining to every single customer, I don't have a printer, leave me your paperwork, I'll be glad to get it to you. So they came, you know, I worked nine to one, they came at two. So at two o'clock, I had to do all these registrations, and then I hand-delivered and mailed them to people that needed them. And, you know, people don't know that I, I do that, or I come in on Saturdays. I do take Fridays in the summer, but Carolyn will tell you how many of them were I, was I here. She's often here. But I just, it, it, it's because I need time just with no window. So it's hard to back the time out. And so and How many hours for an election, did you say? 60 for federal. 60, 60? Six yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And it gives the day of the election. Yes. And it could be... a long day. It could be 40 with a town one. Those were a little less stressful, not as... How much is the stipends? It's 200. 200. <laughs> but, I mean, I could, I could get paid hourly if you wanted me to keep track of it, or you could do a stipend. But it's just... I think in anything federal. It's getting bigger and bigger and much more time consuming. So for this year, um, can we anticipate that it's probably going to be a 40 hour edition? I would think so. I mean, I've never done SP2. Um, it's going to be different. People are going to be in the booths a long time. <coughs> so, you know, the flow is going to be slower. And I am concerned about the machine. It's never handle that many ballots. It's going to be taking, I think, two, both sides, um, possibly three, from each person. So I'm going to be nervous about that. I mean, we have a used piece as it is. We bought a, you know, Don't get too nervous. Don't get too nervous. I mean, it's still a 12-hour window. window regardless of it is. how many ballots. But if the machine goes down, then it isn't. <laughs> Because then we're half counting, we're right back to the original process. You're going to have at least two for the town and one for the school. Yeah, I know. And so that's something we have to think about down the road is getting another machine so that if ours clunks out, we have another one we can roll in. Um, that, you know, I'm always <laughs> trying to save. So the city of Portsmouth is getting all new ones, and I'm going to try to buy one of their used 
No, that's I'm wondering, do you feel like the time that you're putting in is related to um, like antiquated equipment or systems? Or do you feel like it's just the time things take? Like, for example, the absentee ballot thing. Like, in cities, right, they have gajillions of people that are doing absentee ballots. Is there a, is there a software program? Is there something that we can be doing... We, we're all logged into this in the whole state of New Hampshire. It's called, um, it's through the state. And it's on a timer, which is even more frustrating. So I start putting in your absentee ballot, I get a car. I jump up, I do the car, I go back, I'm out. It's gone. I get to go back, start over again. So I come in when I'm not open to do those, because it's the only way I can process them, and it's so particular. I mean, the AG's office can call me and say, Peter Pan ordered a absentee on Friday, and you logged in that you mailed it on Saturday. I mean, and they do. They ask us these questions. It's, it, it is. It's a state program. I do have the right equipment. I just don't have the time. Okay. How many did we get last year absentee balance? We did 70 at the last election. And, um, you know, again, SB2, all new to all of us, a lot of people who maybe wouldn't come and vote may choose to do absentee. So, is, is having something on the double side more taxing for the machine versus having it on the single side? I don't think so, because it is designed to read both sides. That's at the, at the same time? Yeah, I mean, it, oh, it does it at yeah. the same time. Okay. Yeah. The school is the same. Well, I know, but yeah. we're talking about a, a much bigger volume yeah. for this particular election in March. So I didn't know if, if it would be easier just to have a single sheet go through. Well, it would be easier to just have two machines. <laughs> oh, well. But... In a perfect world. I know. Yeah, I know. No, Kate, when you do the ballot test, and you put them all in one way, and you go in another way. You do four it four ways. ways. She has to do the ballot test four times That's to make sure they count. That's mm -hmm. part of it. And see, the general people, they don't understand that. They think I show up that day. and I mean, that's actually the that's the easiest part of an well, election is the day. Because it's like all this help, and it goes well. And, I, you know, I've got to say, our election went beautiful. The parking, people got in and out, the machine works, the numbers were perfect, and everybody bitched because we ran out of stickers. <laughs> so, really? I, somebody t posted, yeah, poor, poor planning. Really? The whole country ran out of them. I'm sorry you couldn't have your selfie of your I voted sticker, but. High turnout everywhere. Oh, God. So I don't want to keep you guys any longer, but I do want to talk to you about... Well, actually, before we move on, so I, oh, I, yeah. I Sorry. Like to propose that we, um, considering that, you know, SB2 is, we have SB2 now, and it, it is going to be more work that we increase the town park stipend, um, say maybe to $500 or something like that. I mean, I can keep track of my hours if you'd rather, but I think 500 is going to ever average out because for federal ones, it's more than 500 for a town, it could be less. And then, and also, you know, keep in mind that when I have elections, I have to go to the deliberative sessions, the actual town meetings that I, you know, six hours, and, and then recounts. It, it, recounts might seem simple, but they're hugely stressful. You have to have the recount, and then the state is immediately on you about getting them sealed and what your results are. It, they're stressful. That, that's not just a... Can I ask Especially a question before? Those, those yeah. One, one thing. I, I would support that increase, but I would also like keep keep track. So let's okay. do both. I can so do that, that we can, you know, we do both and we can see and make sure it's enough. Okay. So can I just ask one question before all of that? Um, how long has it been that there's been a stipend in there? Has it always been a $200? Yeah, God bless her, had a $50 one. Mm -hmm. and, but elections, I'm not saying they were easier. But there were not as many, not as much prep work, and you weren't so tied to the deep, to the state. I mean, the state no, on these Saturdays that I come in, I have to log in that I'm here. I have to tell them what time I checked the mail, what time I checked my emails. We're connected, and Beverly never was. So, anyways, it was 50 for many, 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 many years. Well, it was 200, and then for you for I a little while, but then. It got changed either last year or the year before that it was 200 for every election. She used to only get 200 
for a year. A year. Right. I know. Well, Suzanne was big about promoting that. I know, Charlie, you might know, but others may not know that. Yeah. So I'm just saying, no. it did get changed per election. So now this year's gone back to us to 200 because it's a single election coming up next right. year. Right. And I love those years. <laughs> now, the tax collector, you're covering that Excuse on me? the budget. Or is mm -hmm. Kate? Tax collector. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Can I get a question on Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait. Let Kate finish herself. Oh, so if you're all good with your questions, I just wanted to go over what's going on in our little office. And so I, Caroline helped me and I put together some incredible information on our auto revenues increased 41.48% um, in one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight years. And I have the numbers. Um, in 2013, when I started, I think it was 13. Was it 14? Two, three, four, five. It was 463,000 that we took in in autos. Today, and we're not even done with the month, I'm up to 647. There's been an enormous uptick in this town in autos. When I started, we had 250 dogs, we're up to 600. Um, I instituted the five dollar uh, to each vehicle. You know, I had to work with the state and Caroline. We got that on the program, which raised twelve thousand dollars. Our deaths, births, and marriages have tripled. Uh, the first year I was here, they didn't train me in it, so I didn't do death, births, and marriages. Now I'm doing sometimes seven and eight in a day because the government, the real ID, everybody has to have the original birth certificate. Marriages, um, any name changes, and now for Social Security. Everybody's going to have their original birth, marriage, death. So there's a big uptick there. Then we're selling, of course, the transfer station passes. Um, so I just wanted to say that we're booming. That office is booming. And the revenue that's coming in, Andrea is doing an exceptional job. You know, I see the fire department and the police department, and I see their budgets, and especially their payroll, and the, the public works, and they're all doing a great job, and they've got the best of everything. But our little office seems to get picked apart every year at budget season, and I just want people to realize, Andrew collects $6 million, and her audit is perfect every single year. She not only collects it and it's done properly, and I know people can say, well, that's your job, but she goes over and above. She finds exemptions. She found a $100,000 exemption of somebody who passed away and the person living in the house was still getting it. She just had another person who's getting a full exemption that was off the tax rolls that is now on. That's $300,000, $400,000 alone. The errors she found in... Um, the uh, assessing, thousands and thousands back to this town. And yet she's getting paid the least. She's been here the longest, and she's getting paid the least. And I, I'm taking in close to a million, and I just want you to realize that this little corner office is taking in all the money safely, accurately, to run this town for all our beautiful equipments and all the bling and the... <coughs> and, and I'm actually insulted that it's a 2% increase because I think we do a damn good job. We have very little that we spend in supplies. We bring our own stuff in and 2% is, I think, an insult. So the mistakes that, you, that Andrea's finding that you're bringing up, are that mistakes that Avatar's making or is it mistakes that are... It's both. You know, it's an example. We had a, a family that put a two-car garage with an apartment above it seven years ago. Avatar never picked up on it. Andrew picked up on it. Got Avatar to assess it. That's an additional, I don't know, probably $1,400 on the tax roll. And this is every day that we're, we really work hard. We get the building permit money in here. We, um, like I said, I instituted the registration, the $5 fees, which raised another 12000 We don't just come in and do our job. We look for ways to bring our revenue in, and there's, you know, my audit from the state is perfect. 
Our town auditors used to be here for three or four weeks. Now they're in and out a couple of days. We're saving money on that. So we seem to, you know, we don't spend a lot of money, and we seem to be the, the office that gets kind of picked on when it comes to raises. I would, I would take offense to that. No one is picking on anyone. Not picking on It's across the board, 2%. That's all I'm going to say. And that's what we heard last year. And then the was police. On the board last yeah, year. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm just saying. Okay. So that's what we were told last year. However, the police got three percent, and we were told because we don't have supervisors, we couldn't have three percent. Well, if we're self-motivated enough to where we don't even need a supervisor, I would think we're all the more reason. It's just difficult for us to see. I mean, our fire department looks great, the equipment, I can't believe the police department, the amount of cruisers we have, the highway looks great, and I'm thrilled. As a taxpayer, I love to see that stuff's getting done. But you're talking a couple hundred dollars for Andrea and I, and each year we, there's a different reason why we can't get 3%. I just want to say that I'm usually the picker, um, and it's mostly about the fact that I'm going to keep saying it again and again. We have no job descriptions. We have no method of evaluating performance. So, you know, saying 2% well, is Kim, it's kind of money. obvious if you're collecting $6.1 million for the town, the revenue coming in. And, and that it's and increasing. And all of that. So what do you want for a job description? Yeah, how can we... Do you have Good. a job... Do, wait a minute, do you have a job description? Because I know I do. Who here has a job without a job description? Who here doesn't get evaluated on their performance? But we hear that every year. Yeah. So how can you? we go year to year to year? Working for the government, you, it's a different thing. Everybody gets a certain I work percent. for the government. You, you get your increase, but you also get value. You still get married. Um, Jody, you've got a question? Can anyway, I do? Good. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'd answer. Um, she did turn in a job, job description and evaluation, and we handed it to the chair at the time, and it sat there. Um, and I said, when are you going to finish? And she said, later. And I kept getting later and later and later. It was my job on joint loss when I was on the select board to get everybody's job description, give them to give them to the chief, chief offer to organize it for everybody. And it was turned in. The only one I didn't get was Caroline's, because that kept changing, I think. <laughs> so, so um, and it, it's there's a pile of them somewhere. <laughs> I think we're, we're sliding pretty far off. This is usually a, a select board issue, a personnel issue. I mean, yes, the, the amount, the amounts okay. matter to us, but um, Nancy? I just have, it, it, it has to do with when you're, you're talking your town clerk salary, or are you talking about your stipend? No, town clerk salary. All right. Because I wanted it, to start with the stipend, it, but then. Isn't, isn't, I believe, isn't it because it's a stipend because you're an elected official and you're not actually right. the employee, you're not an employee yeah. of so the I town? So I don't have anyone to supervise me, so every year I hear the same thing. Well, we can't, well, how do we base it? Well, you look at these numbers. 41% increase in autos, the dogs. I mean, to me, that's uh, uh, rewarding. And, and it's hard to come to work and work hard every single day and want to stay with your company. We all work for somebody, and 2% after you really knocked it out of the park is just kind of a. I, I see a lot of money, a ton of money. When you, the police department, oh, their, their salary is what, half a million dollars? Andrea and I don't even make 50 between us. They make less per hour than you guys. Some of them make less per hour. Exactly. Well, not to full-time. Yeah, full-time. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. We're about, per hour. And we're and about $10,000 per officer less than the neighboring, mm -hmm. neighboring towns. Oh, I definitely know that that needs to go up. We've seen the lack of applicants. Um, I just wanted to say that this is where we shouldn't be as a budget committee. This is personnel. It's between the select board and the employees, and we are here to, to look at a budget and say, you know, this is what where we think things are recommended, right? But right. It just, it's just, I think this is not year. something that we should be entrenched in, I think. It's personnel. But if we go to the board, we're told it's the budget committee. If we go to the budget committee, we're told it's the board. The we budget don't. committee is not personnel. We don't no, do no, 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 I know. So, but you're the ones who oh, propose our... A bottom line. 
and the bottom line. We, can, we, we can do bottom line. recommend that, okay. that money is added for certain things, but we can't decide how it's going to be. Did you put in a number for a raise? No, what I thought 3% was average. You know, it's a good economy. Oh. Beverly never once didn't get 3% all the years she was here, so I just assumed we would always get 3% until last year when we got cut back. And, you know, we were told the police did too, but then, lo and behold, the police did get theirs. Well, um, I don't know what, what we, we, I mean, it's good to hear it and good to be aware. Yeah, I think I just wanted to voice it, because I just oh. feel like our little corner office, I mean, we're just as important as the police and the fire and the highway department. I mean, we don't work full time, but we're very important. I mean, if, if the money doesn't come in, Town's not running. In Andrea's collection, you can check all small towns in the area. She has less than a hundred thousand dollars uncollected. She's worked with banks, foreclosure companies, <coughs> uh, people to do payment plans, things that were never done in prior years. And the collection is up. And I agree with Michelle. This is something that you really need to. If you have a grievance with the select board, then that's where the that's where the grievance should be is with the select board because we well I did come in and talk to them but I, I just wanted you as a committee to know as well because I don't think there's anyone in town that knows how much that we put into our positions. So I don't think anybody for the town is overpaid. No. No. Well, either. <coughs> so that's my Thank you, Kate. All right, thank you, Kate. Thank, thank you, Kate. Kate. Back to my baby. No, good job, Kate. Got my little grandchild here. <laughs> there, Weaver. Huh? It's all the bedtime. Okay, thank all right. You. See you, Kate. Good night. Would you guys want to pass around this bunch? That's why uh, when it comes over here, don't even bother. Just send me a copy of it and I'll look at it on the... <laughs> when it comes to the little writing, I can't even see it. So. Jesus. <laughs> why don't we try to start with these? Okay. All right. Start with one yeah. You guys want to join us? Can we step up? Yeah. Yeah. Did we get, did anyone else get this one? Did we get no. Here? No. Have no. Did go this way? Oh, here we go. One surface is under and one surface is under. No. Or any of these seven electronic things? No. Right? It's in the view. No, it's not in there. That's the town. This is sort of water. Okay. Are you sure that? It's on, yeah, you took one of each step. Yeah. 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 Right, I think I got two. You should have two more yeah. Two of the power and then the big packet. <laughs> yeah, all big packet. On this side, all we got is big Three packet. Hundred. Okay, well, I don't know if we have enough with the big color. Um, okay, that's fine. <coughs> th this isn't as important as the big packet. So okay, let's see what's on here. Um, so we have Allison Cully, she's the treasurer. Cool. And, we, and we have Ray. The, um, operator. <coughs> Would you guys like me to make some quick copies? Colored ones? You just said that's the most important piece, right? No, this is the. Uh, it's not as important. Yeah, we definitely only have. This, just, this basically shows yeah. that we're at 99% of our budget in both, on, in both water and sewer right now. That's, that's what we've got Yeah, here. we only have one. Maybe some more of Yeah, I've got two. We have this two coffee. Yeah, they're different. Yeah, they're different. One is water, one is sewer. Okay, 300. One is first line and the other is sewer. Yeah. Can we read it? Sewer. She got sewer. So you said you're at 95%. 95% for water, 95%. 99. 99. Can you give me a set? All right, now we have a set. There we go. I think she is. And I need those copies because I don't have one. So you're going to wait a second. Oh, 
So we had plenty of the big packet. Okay, why don't we start with the water then? You're welcome. Okay. I have an extra sewer here. If anybody was missing a sewer. No, that's what she said. I gave up my sewer. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> okay, so I think we've all seen this um, maybe three, three months ago or so. And I already mentioned that we were not in great shape with water and sewer. I already, I, and I also mentioned that um, we had enough in other parts of the budget to get through the year. And we're kicking our way through and we're going to get through the end of the year without exceeding our budget. Um, if you look at the red area, that's what we expect to spend before the end of the year. I guess the gray. We're not, we're oh. col we're not colored. Oh, okay. no, we're not colored. Oh, just gray. Oh, yours aren't colored. Okay. No, okay. Well, we're you see expected, gray. you're gray. So okay. if you look in the gray area, you're going to see that we've got 23000 that we expect to uh, spend in water, 23359 And that cumulative would be the next line total spent of 292440 and put us at about 99%. So we're, we're going to get there, but... Can you, can, you, can you say it one more time? Because that's not, I don't have those numbers. I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> on the gray line. Gray line water. Yeah. Yep. Next five, nine, oh, nine, we're nine, doing eight. water now? Yeah, we're, we're okay. on water. But it's 23810. 23,510. 23,810. 23,810. Okay, hold on. Maybe the one you took out was the wrong one. So let me let me do it with it again. Okay, 23,810. 23, um, so you're going to see, though, the next line over, total spent will be 20, 292, 891, puts it about 99%. That's what we expect is going to happen by the end of the year. Um, our budget amount was 295. Um, when it's all said and done, we think we're going to have $2,000 left, 2109. And you can see the year before, we only spent 245, so that was 2017. The big difference there is we had, I think I mentioned before, we've had the same budget for the last four years, so what? the same total budget of 292. The difference is the Warren article. If you look below, 50,876 was spent um, and budgeted and spent. So that was our Warren article that was voted on in March. And the way that the, the way things had always gone was there was extra money uh, because we weren't really doing everything. And we'll get to that later. Um, so, look at now. Take a look at sewer. At the same lines, look at the gray area. Um, we're just to the right of the gray area. Two ninety nine seven eighteen. We're projecting to be at ninety nine percent, or two thousand one hundred eighty five dollars remaining. So, give or take a little bit, we're we're out of money. Uh, Warren article the year before. Can I ask you a question? Your, your year goes April though, right? No. I, you changed it to be January to December? We've always been. Not through April. Oh. No. Okay, disregard no. my question. No, we've always been. So then Warren article, we've spent all of that as well. And now, I guess the next place to go is explain why this happened. So. What, what we found when we, when, when, when all the guards changed, basically, is we, we knew that there were things that weren't being done that needed to be done. We knew we weren't planning for the future, and we knew that uh, whenever we had a, um, we, we had in this budget um, money that was coming from, not the, not the reserve fund, but from the, from the, the fund balance to make this budget work. But we were never taking the money from the fund balance because we were never doing the work that we had to do. So with all that all said, um, we did some projects um, in water and in sewer this year um, that with with the capital improvement money that we had in both areas. So I think Ray can probably tell us what we've done, right? Of course, yes. Yeah. So water. Right. Yeah, water. Yeah. water yeah. Where we started on water, um, 
was the Ice Pig in the Willie Street. So everybody's got a little understanding of uh, some of the challenges we're seeing on Willie Street and the surrounding streets. school. The school um, had a lot of color complaints, uh, odor complaints, and what we found is the the Willie Street cross section that connects Locust and Prospect is a, it's reduced to six inch, but it's been it's got, a, it's got a low spot in the road. So that low spot's gathered junk over the years and, and corroded um, tremendously. So it's created a, a much smaller diameter pipe so we don't get the proper flow through there. Um, so what's happening is you get the school on one side of Willie Street, um, which is a heavy user, and then you've got three or four customers on the other side of the culvert. And if the school has a heavy draw or the first thing in the morning, they'll pull and create a disturbance in the water that's just like a water break or a flushing event and it creates color, creates disturbance in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the pipe. So we've gone, the first line of action for that, when I first started, the Little Street customers came to my first monthly meeting. They were all around our table and they were pretty upset and they had you know, colored bottles of water and so would you drink this? And I said, no, I definitely wouldn't. And uh, so the plan that we put in place was to try and take some preventive measures to clean the pipe, which one of the large items on the warrant article was ice picking. Um, what that was, we, we had Suez come in and they create an ice slurry um, and they we forced it through the water main with our water pressure and flushed it into the sewer system. And we did that a couple times um, and then up Locus as well. That seemed to help a little bit, but it wasn't probably three or four months that we started having public complaints again. So the next thing that was pretty large on uh, expanding this more article was the um, addition of the flushing hydrant on, on that low spot. So we put a new hydrant in, tapped into that water line, so now we can alleviate the color at the lowest point, which we never had the ability to do before. Um, and the two hydrants are so far apart, you couldn't get enough pressure or enough velocity to really clear the line in that low spot. So that was an investment we made in, in all understanding that it was a band-aid for the time being because the, the underlying issue is the pipe past its expected life and it needs to be replaced. But we're talking about a $240,000 replacement just for Willie Street. So <clears throat> these are all measures that we're taking to uh, obviously provide a decent quality of water to the customers there. Um, the flushing when needed to eliminate the, the color. Uh, when, whenever I get a call from one of the residents saying that the color is bad. Um, the other one that we did, we replaced the hydrant in front of the school. It was a short little stubby hydrant. Um, and the goal there was we were going to put a, uh, an automated flushing uh, mechanism on the hydrant. But over time we found that flushing there was causing water for the surrounding customers, they were getting some water in their basement, so that kind of went to a halt. Um, obviously we can't flush there because it doesn't work, it can't be flooding basements. So the other option would be to flush at the, at the low spot, but there's, it's a wetlands. So we need a special permit to discharge down there. Um, it's really not an option either to discharge on a regular basis. So <clears throat> those were two big three big line items on this Warren article um, for the corrosion control issue on, well, the, the color bless you, issue on Willie Street. The other thing that we've been faced with, the other challenge is um, lead and copper and corrosion control. Um, and around when I first started as well, we, we had a, a violation come through for lead and copper um, for not, well, failing to failing to uh, maintain proper corrosion control uh, per the state requirements. So what that meant was we failed the lead and copper round in 2015. When that happened, we implemented um, the need to in implement a corrosion control system. Part of that was <clears throat> to implement the corrosion control system and also get two, uh, two, round, two successful rounds of lead and copper within a two year period. We failed to do that. So that was right when I took over. Um, so with that being said, we reached out to Wright Pierce uh, and Hoyle and Tanner. We got bids on options for a corrosion control study. Um, 
Wright Pierce ended up winning that bid, and some of the money, well, I think all the money for that corrosion control study came out of this warrant article. Um, and then when going through that corrosion control study, uh, Wright Pierce found that there was a grant available for asset management. Um, so they applied for us. Um, it was a, a $40,000 asset management study, and we're responsible for 20 of it. The state picks up the other 20. So some of that cost came out of this as well. So with all that said, we identified that we have obviously a corrosion issue, um, but we were able to identify what the issues were. Um, and, and with that information, we updated, or upgraded, I should say, the General Sullivan chemical feed. Um, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got four chemicals at General Sullivan that were essentially just being injected with no checks and no balances. So we were, we were spending money on caustic, hypo, um, and bicarb, and all three of them do different things for different reasons. Uh, but hypo, most importantly, is for disinfection. But the other two products were for corrosion control as part of the corrosion control efforts to uh, get the lead and copper back in, in compliance. So <clears throat> we found that we were, impl we were injecting these chemicals, but not at the right level. So we've got two wells in town. We've got General Sullivan, and we've got four. And we found that there were uh, drastic differences between the chemistry of the water that were causing, basically self-inflicting our problems on Willie Street. Because we've got Porter injecting into the system. Willie Street is a direct shot, and it's a low point. And we've got General Sullivan water that's typically in the system because it's our workhorse. So the days we would run Porter, we would inject this drastically different chemistry uh, makeup of water into that area, it would create this reaction um, that now we know was it was helping cause the issue outside of the fact that we're past the life expectancy of the pipe. So um, <clears throat> we the efforts up at, at Porter, um, there were some, out of this Warren article as well, there were some uh, changes made to the um, automation and the programming for uh, our SCADA system so that we can operate in, in some flexible manners uh, by the state's guidelines. So that was, there was quite a bit of money that was invested up there to do that as well. Excuse me for a second. Um, to generalize what happened um, was we really weren't controlling the water the way that we should have from the, from the two different wells, the way that the water's met. And because of that, we've got more corrosion in our system than, than, than we would have had. Are our pipes old? Yeah. Do we have unlined pipes that need special attention? Yes. But this is kind of a, this has been kind of the, the big growing year for the water chemistry to get the water so that both wells complement each other. For sure. that right? Or Absolute thousand percent. So we, we want to have the water from the two wells be as close as possible to the chemical makeup. And that what we're really looking for is pH, alkalinity, and then we put the, the chlorine into the system so we want to match the residuals as well so that we don't have this crazy clash of the titans essentially of these two different waters creating you know different off gassing or whatever could happen. Now from this now from this study that we did, we needed to um, we, we've realized that we still have trouble. We, you know, we, we, the system's still old. So we need to needed to come up with a method to help us, you know, to get to get us by because we've got all this old infrastructure. Sure. So we did some research and we ended up implementing I'm not sure what you're after. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's, you're stepping it. I mean, if, if we got time, I'd like to explain it so we can lay the, the groundwork. It's, I know it's it's a lot, but going through the Warren articles, is there's multiple things happening, right? And there's different reasons why we spent money out of the Warren article at Porter. Corrosion is one of them, but Porter Well is also the, the well that produces arsenic for our system. Where's Porter? I'm sorry. Porter is, um, it's on the, off of Pine Street, essentially. I guess so this is the history that you basically your budget came in 
We have okay. Our uh, budget okay came in okay, okay, but we did a lot of you stuff. You did a lot of stuff, but you still kept it under budget. So are you laying the groundwork for an explanation of why you're going to have an increase? It's, going, it's going through the. It's, okay. going, it's going to go through the roof because okay. this was the tip of the ice. Okay. Right. That's and that's I'm kind of trying to go exactly lay the groundwork so you guys have a clear understanding of the, you know, the state of the system. Okay. And, um, we, and we did as much as we could with what we had. Sure. Yep. Um, and and the, the other, you know, the other thing is um, for the complexity that we have, other other areas have a separate water guy and a separate sewer guy. We've got one guy, and he's doing a great job. But you know, when we get to the budget part of it. I'm sure people will have a, have questions about that, but I wanted to lay the groundwork so that you know what we're doing. Okay, that's what we're yeah. budget. Right. For sure, but and it all ties in. Obviously, I know it's it's a lot, uh, but it's complex. We've got two different wells. We've got that's just the water. We're not even talking sewer yet. So, uh, but the going back in the to quarter well, um, we identified that the water was drastically different than General Sullivan. We also identified um, through a violation that we weren't treating for arsenic properly. So um, one, of the, one of the big expenses here as well was to identify and figure out how we could correct that. And we were able to do it fairly inexpensively um, by purchasing a few pieces of a lab equipment, dealing with the state and using them as a, as a huge reference point because they've been involved with our system. They get the most tenure with our system. Cindy Clevens from um, uh, from the state has been involved with Porter since it was put online. So she was able to give me a lot of useful information. Um, with that said, we were able to get out of violation for, for arsenic, but it's come at um, an expensive cost to operate the plant. Okay. It, it requires a lot of man hours. You've got to babysit it because it has to be run a specific way. It requires a backwash. We have to test the water that's coming through um, <clears throat> on the treated side of the filters. Once we start seeing um, the turbidity change to a certain level, it indicates to us now we know this, that we do backwash so that we clear the filters and we start running again. It might be five, six hours into the run, but that way we're not discharging the water. So, <clears throat> so, so something that I wanted to bring up, this whole thing about the two wells, we need to have two wells. We've never really run this well other than just a little bit because no one really figured out how to run the well. So now we've figured out how to run the well, we've worked with the state, and now it costs more to run the well. That's that's the reality of it. Yeah, the cost per gallon at port it's, it's, is... It's, it's more expensive to run it, but we, right. we need that water and we can't just keep running one well. We need to run this. Just for a reference point, the cost per gallon at Porter is 0 0.0032 cents a gallon. That's just chemicals and, and that's chemicals and electric in the lab. It doesn't take into consideration um, infrastructure. It doesn't take into consideration labor or maintenance. The cost for General Sullivan um, is 0 0.00071 cents a gallon because it's it's less complicated of a process to treat the water. So, but in terms of groundwork, that going over the warrant article, it, it explains why we burnt through fifty thousand dollars on a water warrant article, um, and still tore through our budget to be able to not only get us out of you know, back into compliance with arsenic, but we've learned how to operate the plant effectively. Um, we just had our third quarter of um, non-detect limits on arsenic, which is great for us that we know that what we're doing is proven to work. Um, but it, it, it came at a cost and it's going to continue to come at a cost. So. Any questions about what we did this year? Do you want to look at the first page water 2019 proposed? So our old budget was around 300000 Our new budget is about 360000 And then we have capital improvements of 30000 17000 totally 47000 um, So the operating budget plus a warrant article um, puts us at 407. 
It's about a 25% increase. Yeah. Okay. Take a look at the sewer. Again, the original was about 300,000. This year's is 377, plus 50. That 50 bill is coming from the general fund. Uh, we've met with the auditor, and the auditor, we, we discussed with the auditor what's reasonable to you know, take from our operating fund and what level we should be at. And about 50 is, is that's all we've really got that we can put anywhere towards and still be at a comfortable level. Um, so 427.369 is including the one article, but that money won't be coming from rates. So then if you take a look, if you take do the math from the first two pages, we're really looking for $784,000 instead of $600,000. So basically it's $187,680 bucks that's going to have to be made up. That's the increase over the year. So, um, for, uh, for us to run the plant like it should be run, and, and that's, we're, we're, we're not closing, we're, we're really trying not to close our eyes, or, and we're really trying to push things out. We've got a five-year plan that we've been working on. Could you run those numbers again? 180. Oh, I'm sorry, 187, 680 yearly, yep, going up between the two. And, yep. that has, and that has to come from rates. I know. So what does that do to rates? Spikes at 30 or 40 percent. I, I don't know the mm -hmm. exact number, but it's... When will that be known? It has to be part of the budget. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. what, what we've done is we've instituted a 12 percent increase on the next bill, which is technically this year. And then next, and then the next bills will have the increase in them. We, we, we got a grant for a rate study, and we're waiting for the results of the rate study to potentially completely reconfigure how bills are created, um, the minimum amount of usage for um, a given amount, and then what it costs after that, and so forth. So we instituted a relatively small, yet still large, increase for right now to get people's attention. It's going out with a letter to explain what's going on. Um, but it's just the first step because we're going to wait to see what happens with the rate study to see how to get the, um, the money that the plants need, um, but with a structure that makes sense too, given the information they give us. I have a question. If you're doing it in this year's, have you notified the, the people that you're increasing? When's the bill go out? There's a bill going out with a letter telling them what's going on. With no right? notification prior? It's only going to be a ten dollar increase on both sides, but we've got to do something to handle what we have to do. So that's going out twelve percent. You said it's going up twelve percent. So but it really is. Going to, then, by the time we're done, it's going to be thirty five or whatever it is. We've got to look at it. Hmm. It's a cra It's a crazy increase, but we we haven't been running the plant properly. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, but Michelle. So I've been on this committee a long, long time, and I every time there's a change of people, we hear how horrible the people before did that we heard for years how great they were doing. So I'm, I have to say I'm tired of that. Um, but that being said, I, I don't understand <clears throat> how you can change your budget by what I'm looking at here. Um, <clears throat> surprise, Kim didn't beat me to this. Um, by 300000 and not think to bond it or do something because I personally as a water sewer user, part of the, that's part of, crazy to say it's going to go up 30, 40 part of the five Part of the five-year plan is going to be some bond, some bonding, but... What part? If you're already at 300, not to, not to go back for you, but you're at 300000 here. here. This, is the, this is the question. Do you bond the everyday operation or do you bond the project? You can't. That's, that's the answer to your question, is that only what's listed in there as warrant articles is potentially bondable, but those don't rise to the level of bonding. We already have bonds that we're still paying off, and we have bonds that we are going to be planning for in the next few years. So bonding is part of the plan, um, but most of the increase that you're seeing is in operation in increased chemical use, in increased um, repairs and maintenance that weren't happening, yeah. and the like of that. And salary. 
and salaries. And salaries. And salaries. And, and, you know, you didn't have people, you didn't have a water person and a sewer person, but yet the state, you know. The state's been recommending since 2007 that the, the wastewater treatment facility go to two and a half employees. It's just the wastewater treatment facility, never mind talking about the water side. So what's very interesting, what's very interesting is we found a report uh, from 2015 that looked at our facilities and they said that we needed a 10%, 10%, 3%, and 3% increase. That's 20, that's 26%. Yes. If we had the 26% increase through these, through right now, we'd be about right where we need to be. If you compound, once you compounded it. But nobody, nobody had their eyes open, nobody was talking about it, and we were not preparing things. I don't, I don't know Just what... Just as a follow-up comment, that with a town that has such a small number of people, and I'm one of them, that's using both systems, um, I just can't imagine Yeah, you might take a 50 or, you might take a 50 or $60 hit by the time this is done, in a quarter. Just so, <coughs> so all of this is on the water and sewer. There's no... No, um, we don't. By taxation? So no. none of this comes out of taxation. So it's all on done use. That's why all I buy it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was thinking so, you know, we, I'm not on either either. We we have a you know we have very a seriously um, it, it's tough to take and you know it's gonna be like twenty bucks a month, you know, that the, the increase will be probably. Well and it's not not to keep the belabor in this, but it's not just your single family is unfortunate. I have a single family, but people that have multiples, which I have neighbors that are owner you know, they live there and they rent. You know, they get hit twice regardless of the number of users. So I guess my question when you talk about a rate study is there are towns that have a uh, that go by usage. If you hit a certain amount, um, you know, your bill is X versus everybody I talk to that I say what our usage allowed is, oh my God, right, that's exactly. so much, why yes. would you do that? And so is there any discussion about the people that use there absolutely yes, is. less water would pay less than the people yeah. that have, you know, families there. of eight or ten, whatever. You there know. absolutely is. So I'm waiting for the right stage. Yeah. Another question, being a, oh, the homeowner pays water, and then I'm a landlord who pays the utilities for my tenants. So theoretically, my tenants, if you could have to cough up twenty dollars a month. No, they wouldn't because <laughs> I pay the bill. Well, but you'll you raise your rent. I got to raise your rent. Have to raise your rent. Do you know? Yeah. Do, do do collectively? Do do you know whether it's a landlord that pays on on these rentals in town or not? Because the bill goes to the owner. My, the bill goes to the owner of the, of the property. That's all you know. You don't know what who pays it. I think. I come down and pay. I know that you pay the bill. If you get the bill, you pay the bill, but no, I don't know how it happens internally. But the problem is, we well, haven't had an increase in 14 years on one side and six or seven on the other. Wow. And we've had our eyes closed, and we haven't staffed properly. We haven't staffed according to what this, how we're supposed to staff. And because we weren't staffed properly, the quarter well, which is, is a very complex treatment process with very corrosive chemicals, hasn't been run properly. You know, we've been self-inflicting issues for years. I mean, that's just, it, it is what it is. And it's not passing blame. It's We've identified the issue. We've corrected we it. we got to move forward. But we have to move forward. We're looking at close to a million dollar project to repair Lily Street, Locust, and Prospect. That's the proposed amount of today's money. So to bond that alone, we're talking $56,000 a year. So what we're looking to do is obviously not bite that all off at once. But Willie Street needs to be addressed because you've got the school and you've got you've got six tenants or six customers that are getting poor quality water. Um, unfortunately, it's a big chunk of money though just to replace for six or seven users. But it needs to be done. No, we have bonds. Just, we have bonds that are coming up, and we're trying to offset with the bonds that are going to be dropping off. Like the Willie Street project with the with the. Uh, benzene bond that off at 21. There's about a two or three thousand dollar difference, I think, between the two costs. So, if 
we can time it right by the time engineering and everything happens, and it's probably not going to be till 21 till the project is at substantial completion, we'll have dropped a bond that could almost cover the cost of Willie Street. Within a couple of thousand dollars, right? But we're still, we still have to identify the issues with Locust and Prospect because they're both also unlike cast iron pipes that are from the same age and have been treated with the same water. So right now the low point on Willie Street showing showing its issues, but the concern is we replace it. We still have the low point. Those two other cast iron pipes that are surrounding it are going to still send colored water down. And a, pro and a cross section of the pipe shows that about um, in a six inch pipe, you've got about an inch and a half on the wall all the way around. It's not there anymore. Oh, it's all. Yeah, it's choked down. Yeah, it's maybe a four and a half. Inch pipe. So you know you're not going to flush that out. That's not going to go away. It's too much. It's like it's right. The the kind of good news, I guess, is that um, if we do those three streets, that's half of our unlined material. Uh, that's half of our entire system. That's been some of the study work that we've been doing this year. So those three streets consist of more than half of our online cast. The rest of the online cast is in the village. So it's, um, and that can be done in sections because there's cross sections and but it's not, ways to valve it. But it's not in trouble right now and probably because it's older and of a better quality material. But the quality of the material that you was right. used in the Woolly Street and surrounding area is newer, but it is it's not known enough. to be a forecast. Yeah. That, that that era was a forecast or uh, cast iron across the board. Now the other thing that we've done is we've introduced a polymer yeah, into, so the, into the system. Right. Why don't you, yeah. So the the we're other, trying to buy as much time as we can. That's that's the we are. So we after we got the corrosion control study back and working with the state in, in implementing changes in our process in producing more consistent water quality coming out of both wells so that we didn't have the clash we were still fighting the corrosion issue so <clears throat> there had been studies done again this the study that i picked up was done back in 2000 and I'm, i can't quote it right now it was so long ago i couldn't believe it We've used Harcross for our chemicals forever. So the same lady delivers the chemicals that's been around for the last four superintendents. And she said, right, you know, we, we put a whole plan together for corrosion control. Uh, it's, um, Harcross makes it's a, it's a polymer blend. Uh, polyorthophosphate is what the chemical is. And what that does is twofold. It's a 50-50 blend. You get the poly and you get the ortho. The poly helps sequester the color and the ortho lines the pipes so that it doesn't continue to leach into the, into the water. So we, imp we implemented that about four months ago. We've seen great success. We just, um, we just successfully passed um, our last round of lead and copper to put us back into compliance. It's cut our testing back uh, to once a year instead of three times a year, and it's cut our, our testing points in half. So we were doing 24 sites, now it's 10. So the 24 sites cost us $1,000 a, a, a cycle to do the lead and copper sampling. So we've cut that back dramatically. Um, but that's, again, a band-aid to, to handle the online gas that we know has already passed its life, but that we're not in a position to replace right now. So. I go back to my question that the absentee land owner, and in my case, if I continue with what I have now, I'm going to have a tremendous increase in my uh, water bills. My projection is about $20 a month. And, uh, but all the homeowners are going to have all the homeowners are going to have this problem around water. The private homeowners. My question is, and you people should be able to supply us taxpayers. What proportion of the property is rental here, and which proportion is and that Reynolds. theoretically could be paid by the landlord? Excuse me, because the, 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 the landlords are the ones who are going to fish like hell about this. Well, and I'm sorry, um, but that's really not uh, related to what to, to the budget right now. I mean, I, it's it's important. I right want, now, but the rate study is going to have that type of information in it. It will well, have it. That's why I said we get a bunch of information to. Owners, both private and 
sure. Absolutely, and I enlarge. So, keep in mind, I use water too, right? I'm in, the, I'm in the district, I use the water, and I don't want it to go up. You know, I, but seeing what's going on and seeing, you know, seeing what we have to do, I, I get it. But then we started looking at, hey, what are the surrounding people using? What, and what are they paying? And that's very interesting. Did you bring that? Yeah, I've got the studies um, for, for the surrounding areas. That I think the easiest thing, instead of going through each town, and I, I'm willing to do it, is just to understand that in terms of a water, a combined water and sewer community, community district, community service, whatever we you know want to be classified as. In terms of you know the whole state, we rack we rack and stack in the bottom 25 percentile in terms of cost per gallon. So we are in the, the we are in the 25 cheapest um, percent. cheapest percent. I, yeah, I have a hard time saying yeah. that. Yeah. If it makes sense, yeah. So we're there's a, we got a, in, and then when you look at our surrounding towns, Dover, Summersworth, Portsmouth. Uh, I did a study. So Dover, Summersworth, Portsmouth, Newmarket, and Rochester, right? So closest to us in that one layer out, they're, they're charging a lot more per gallon than we are. But they don't pay that sewer. Did you look at the sewer as well? For sure, it's yeah. Water we, we are lower than everybody in terms of surrounding for sewer and water. And then what was really interesting is when you took the first town that was small, smaller, you know, like us, still bigger than us, but small, they were most. So for a small community to, like, properly make water, make water, make water and process sewer, it costs money. But we weren't doing it. That's, that's our problem. But when, when you did that, were you doing, per, on that small area, were you doing the amount of people that actually use the system compared to the amount of people? Yes, no, the, no, what the bill is. The tool the that bill? we, the tool, one of the tools that we use is provided by New Hampshire, and it's you. You can go to it, anybody here at this table can do it. You can go to um, go to the site. You can pick a town. You can see exactly where they land uh, in regards to the median affordability, to their their cost per gallon for water and sewer. You can separate them from just a water system to just a sewer system. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you how many in the town have. Correct. Yeah, are no, it does. That. It, it does. does. It tells you others. A thousand residents. Correct. That's what I was saying when you were yeah, saying so they were at the top. How many users right. did they have? Right. So but it, but we're, it, we're taking just dollars and cents, and we're saying if our bill is two hundred thirteen dollars right now, and our bill is going to go to up sixty more dollars or eighty more dollars in a month, that number, that two thirteen, is in the lower twenty five percent of everybody in the in the, in the state. Right. Do you, do you see where I'm going with that? No, because it, it, it go, if, if you're paying $213, it's because you have a lower pool. If you had a larger pool like some other town may have that might be smaller but more people use that pool, then their amount is going to be different than your pool of people. I'm, I'm just saying, what's the bill? The bill's 213 Everybody else okay. has a... Okay, I get my water in Dover. My water bill for a year is probably 140 a year. Not according to that. Well, want to see our bills? That's what we my bills yeah, that might well, go to the rate structure. The, yeah. the structure the the I, wear the, yeah. I use the minimum most of the time. Yeah. And in the summer, I go over a little bit. But and my total is 100. And I think the minimum in Dover is like 5000 versus 15000 The minimum monthly charge in Dover is $39.94. A month. It's the based on this rate. Well, Dover does a quarterly. So they're charging. They're charging. We do, we do, they're charging we do a quarterly. Point zero zero seven cents a gallon. Okay. We charge point zero zero five five cents a gallon. Okay, but I think our base is high. Yeah. It yeah. is. Our base is high. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no you know, there's no doubt we're we're working on identifying the structure high. change, but we don't have the information for that right now. We're waiting on it. Well, it's it's hard to change everything in a year. I mean, we, we're, we're, but that would be an important change because... The well, we've, we've implemented the rate study, but we, and it, it, conserves it takes water. time. It's right. a conserve water. The only problem is, think about this. If everybody all of a sudden conserves water, and we identify, we have to identify based on our usage, right, based on history, how to make revenue. So if, if, we, if we change our method, 
we could not take in enough money to be viable. It's just like reevaluation. Your evaluation may go up when taxes go down or it goes the other way. <laughs> Still getting the money. Can we talk about administrative costs? Because I don't yep. think visibility into the increases from last year to this year. Yep. Um, can you can you go through a budget workshop give us the year over year comparison? We only have two so we don't have any idea of the increases um, in your administrative budget. Okay, so take that first page, the one that you looked at originally, with the strike. So I mean a breakdown. So you have a breakdown? Yeah, yeah. we can pull that together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because I, I was under yeah. the impression that everybody was going to follow the same, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the same okay. schedule no. of doing no. this. So we have <laughs> the same lines as last year? There, the here's, here's the problem. We we started breaking it out. To, to, the, the, the old budget hit everything. You really couldn't see what was there. So what we did is we started breaking it out. You see how there's so many more lines? Right. So that, if That's we how had, we want to move forward. If we had the same totals... We don't, know, we don't know what that is because those... those All right, bottom line totals. We can get it. We just had to yeah. hold it into it. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. And when is that? January 2nd. Oh, January 2nd. Thank you, Peter. Did we answer the question or no? Oh, uh, well, uh, you said so that you provide it so we could see. But the, we don't have those categories. How so I think we can, I mean, so, so I think the way we're going to ameliorate this is that we'll have a new line which is going to have X number of dollars. It will be zero last year because it's a new it's a new line. It'll have money this year, not last year. But there will be other lines that'll have zero this year that had money in it last year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just so even though they don't line up, it's okay. No, because because they'll see the bottom line and they can see a little bit better how the money got moved. Okay. Well, I mean, for me, I'd like to see you know what percentage increases we're seeing in some of these lines year over year. So, I don't know if you can pull that out of your budget. Keep in mind, though, the lines aren't going to line up. Wait, so well, you don't know last year what you paid the commissioners, for example? She's right, right, we do. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the same, so, like, but yes. And then your personnel line, um, you know, are these new? Are some of them new? Are they existing? We have new people. Yeah, we have new people. Okay. So, yeah. people yeah. so, that's, so, just some detail around where we were at last year on some of these line items and where we are this year. Do that. And all you're saying is that some of those, some of the lines on there won't match up, but, but the ones like the, like the right. it personnel will. It will give yeah. an idea. Yeah, because right. that's basically what Kim's asking about yes. the personnel. Yeah. Yes. Well, if you take the like uniforms and, um, you know, because really, to Michelle, Michelle, you know, there's some things you can control and some things you can't. So it sounds like there are certain things in infrastructure that we can't control, but we have to look at other areas. Right, and understand that we've been running so lean for so long. We took on another full-time employee, and we've also taken on a part-time employee. So, and that's, that's to meet, that's to barely meet the standards that the state's looking for. We have so something. how did you never get called out by the state that you didn't, I, you weren't meeting these qualifications? Qualification it's, it's, it was coming down the pipeline, I can tell you that right now. Isn't it because it's a recommendation, on. it's not a, it's not... It's recommended. So it's recommended. It's but let me explain, though. It's recommended until you fail, right? If you fail and you've been recommended for years to man your staff properly, then you're not going to have a whole lot of excuses when the state comes down. And you're not producing quality water that we should be sending to our residents to drink. And also, we're discharging uh, poor quality water into the river. You're not going to have an excuse to argue that. So, it, it, Is there a staffing issue, though? It is a staffing issue. It was a staffing issue? This part, part of all of this problem was a staffing issue, absolutely. There wasn't enough people to do the job that was needed. So Warren said that the uh, 
was running great for the last three years, was or five years, was obviously lying for the budget money. Mm -hmm. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by Michelle on that. I don't I can't agree with that the case. I mean, we like she said, every time things change, you know, you hear a different story. So I'd rather not just make that. And we don't have to go down that rabbit hole. We, no. There's okay. plenty of study that's been done this year to prove what's going on. It doesn't have to turn into a finger pointing game. Right. We can identify okay. the problems, and bottom line is, we got some major problems that are going to cost a lot of money to repair. So, however we slice it and understand it, it doesn't have to be pointing fingers. We need to figure out a way to move forward so that we can sustain our system and we can also sustain the ability to run the system. But also, we all sat here for years, and the budget, and I remember this for, I don't know how many years in a row, $301,000, uh, budget hasn't changed. It's the same, and I, I'm going, how is this possible? But it didn't go up for, I don't know, four or five years. It was the same number, and I remember it. It's $301,000. I joined the budget committee, and I you know, was told, don't worry, I mean the budget committee, the, the water and sewer so, commission, and I was told, don't worry about yeah. it, you don't do that. So, that, that, I mean, this guy does here's, it and he here's says the answer, good. it seems, so I, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, so, you know, it's time to pay the piper and, you know, the bills come due. So, That's what it's sounding like. You know, so we, you know, we address the issues, we move on, and, you know, it is what it is. I um, agree with that. I don't like it, but. Right, right. Yeah, I don't like sitting here being the, the person that came in new and, and this is what's being presented a year after I showed up, you know. But th these are these are hard, true facts, yeah. and the goal is, you know, we just proof the letter that's going to go out for all the ratepayers, and the goal is at our annual meeting, you know, we're going to have guest speakers there to be able to explain what's going on at, at another level. Yeah. So we've got Rice, Wright Pierce did our engineering work. They're going to be there. They're going to present the corrosion control study. They're also going to present um, <clears throat> the the art, well, the corrosion control study and the lines, the replacing the lines. The 2020, no, sorry, the, no, the yeah, 2020. The, yeah, the uh, the grant that they yeah. just did for the asset management. Um, Cindy Clevens from the state, I'm hoping, I haven't got commitment from her, I'm pretty sure she will. She was, she was, she was such a uh, huge uh, asset in getting past the arsenic issue. She understands it, she can explain. Um, even though we're a small community, we have a very complex water system. And that's how she worded it to me when I first started. So I was like, you know, I was told, it's just a little water system. It's not a big deal. You just show up, you turn the wells on, and move on. Really? So we, we only require a grade one treatment right now, but that's being looked at um, to be raised because of the complexity of our system. So <clears throat> I'm hoping to have all the right people there to be able to answer everybody's questions on not only on rates but the reasons why we're where we're at. Um, and we're not just throwing darts, you know, that these are these are true hard facts and um, you know, we have one other we don't have a backup clarifier. Um, we haven't even got into the sewer side. I mean the, 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 we all we've talked about right now is water. Yeah. There's two yeah, two, two facilities and understand that they're both in the same type of shape. So what's the next water bill going out? We're, we're meter reading as we speak. So. End of the month? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And is the meeting date on that letter? Yes. I just came by my house today. It's the end of the day. It hasn't been finalized. It's going to be the end of March. I think the third Wednesday of March, you said, right? We haven't set the date. We have to set the date. It's going to be in March. Well, I hate to be the, the bringer of bad news, but this is what this is what we're finding. Um, you know, we I think we kicked the bucket too too long, and I think that we just have to um, fix. Well, we don't have a choice. We got to fix what was going on. Um, and I was one of the people that was on the committee when we came in and said, "Yeah, we've got the same budget. We're fine. I'm happy to tell you that." But all of the committee didn't work on the budget. <coughs> Are there other questions? So there's more to be presented. Are you planning to present the same detail on sewer now, or are we pretty? We can tell you what we, we can tell you what we have. You've got the total number, right? I mean, the, the number that was presented is a total number for both. Um, we can definitely go through some some issues with sewer. If you guys want to hear it right now. We, I would love to share them with you. <laughs> 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 
I can put an email together for you guys for sure. I mean, the the letter that I you know we just put together has a, highlights a lot of the challenges that we faced this year, and it touches on challenges that are coming up. I, I want to thank Ray because what he's done is he put, what he brought to the table is he's a he's a licensed electrician, and these water upgrades would have been ridiculously costly if we didn't have him to jump in and not just be the you know the superintendents, but to to do all these to be part of all these in-house <coughs> projects that we've done. Um, we've saved a lot of money and. Like maybe you said, we could put together exactly how much money we've spent, we've saved, versus um, what you would have spent. Out, what you would have spent but yeah. it's 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 been you know, it's really been a running show because you know we knew that we didn't have the instrumentation in the condition it needed to be, nor did we have the right instrumentation. So in the water side, now on the sewer side, we're in kind of a similar situation. We have a, um, a pump valley that each pump is it costs about fifteen thousand dollars. It's antiquated equipment. Uh, some of it goes back thirty years. Twenty anyway. 20 I mean, anyway. The, yeah, the one pump goes back about twenty years. And we put some money into these pumps this year. High money into these money and time uh, maintenance wise. So these pumps are fifteen thousand dollars to replace. There's three of them. It's about forty five thousand dollars if everything hits the fan. Um, what Ray is proposing with a little bit of help from the engineering is he, he feels that he can rebuild the entire pump galley um, with new pumps and equipment, pumps that are less money, um, more user friendly, more uh, easier to repair, um, and he's feeling that we can do that for the $50,000 instead of Forty-five to just, just kind of pumps, and, and the other big part of the problem in that pump galley, um, not only the pumps an issue, because there's three different pumps, and we don't have one pump that's the same. So you got to stop and have backups for each one of those pumps. That gets expensive, but that pump galley is kind of like the heartbeat of the plant. It's the easiest way to understand it, and there's flow meters that are down there that report back to my automation system that tell me that things are running in the capacity that I needed to to operate the, the wastewater treatment facility correctly. What I identified at the beginning is, you know, I was, was making changes, just wasn't seeing things react the way they were supposed to. And come to find out that the flow meters, in it, the flow meters support reading accurately. So it's telling me 25 gallons a minute, but it's putting 55, 60 gallons a minute out. It doesn't sound like a lot, but for a very small plant, it can upset the plant really quickly. So, you know, it kind of just drills down to how many issues are just in the pump galley, and, and, and then we could, you know, in March, there's going to be a whole demonstration and conversation of what's going on. I can put an email together if you guys would like, listing some items, or all the items that are going to be needed to, you know, going to be needed, need addressing um, in the future. We've also had a safety um, issue there, too. The way it's set up is... Well, it bought somebody three stitches in 2017? No, actually, it was staples. Uh, <laughs> staples, yeah, she got staples. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Well, that's so, right. so it just, just to for clarification, so we're looking at um, 47,000 in the Warren, in Warren article, is that right? And then 47 in Warren, yeah. And then about 190 in um, increased fees. 187. Okay. Now, hold on, and then there's another Warren. Of 50 that's coming from the general fund. Yeah, pump galley system upgrade. That's oh, going right. to be that's going to be that doesn't affect it. Then that that's that doesn't affect that doesn't affect the budget. Does not affect the budget. Thank you. Are we got any more questions for the yeah. tour? Thank you guys. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I did, yeah. So that's, that's my background. I came out of Dover. You know, I just looked up in the industry. So he hired me as an electrician, and then I got to for the wastewater side. Um, seven years out is when I took this position. I achieved my grade four in the wastewater. I had no water experience, so when I took the job, it was. The, it was. Was that? Was it walking the world?
Yeah, well, yeah, no, it's all right. We're getting through it, but it was, um, it shows some foot challenges. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we start on page nine, and um, the um, decreases in supervisors and moderators is due to less elections. Um, admin support um, changes to, um, we're recommending a change that we have a full-time administrator and add a part-time She does work maybe um, three hours a week or so in my office. She typically puts in. Um, oh, she does like the mail. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's approximately three hours or so a week. Is yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you got the town administrator for sixty thousand. Yeah. Is that for a year? Salary. Yeah. But they won't. She'll only be he or she will only be there for nine months because it will be after the election. So it'll probably be well, before a year. But yeah, but you're only going to be budgeted at 45 for this year. Well, mm -hmm. we have someone who's filling in the shoes right now, so her hours were brought up to full time. Yes, I know that. Okay. But I would say that you should be at 45 plus Caroline's hours times 2% for the first three months. Yeah. Okay, you've got 60000 in the budget for position. It's only going to be for nine months. Mm -hmm. So that should be forty-five. But you're still going to have Caroline filling in for three months with a 2% raise, is what I'm saying. He's saying Whatever that it will not take effect until after the election. Until April. But that's well, really a board board decision. It's Board of Selectmen's decision whether or not we start it immediately. Or it, we don't need <coughs> approval of it. We only need the approval of the wages. We can we can put someone in that position and change the title. Are you going to have a hiring committee? Um, I don't know. I haven't talked about it. I don't know. Suzanne was always a big advocate for committees like that. Um, well, she's not on the board anymore, so I'm not sure I have to talk to the other two. I don't know. Um, so <clears throat> have you um, kind of evaluated other towns to know that that's the going rate for administrators? Um, that was created out of um, the, in the context of the ad hoc town manager committee report that was devised, which has quite a bit of contextual information um, with, I think there were 10 other communities in our 
population and valuation size. So that's on the website and it has a lot of information which precipitated all this. So yes, it is um, in, in the low to moderate range for that position for a town our size. <laughs> Our plan is that we're going to go forward for it. That, that's all I know of this month. Our salaries for this. Yes. And this is when you said a full time position, so the person is full time, meaning 40 hours. That's the intent, it's set for 40 hours, but they changed it Monday night to be a salary. Salary. But with a salary. Versus the, hourly. Yeah, but with a salary, a salary position, there's still an expectation of the what expectation would be. Is 40. And you'll be posting for that position. It has to get through the process first. I don't. I, I'm no, assuming no, it will no, be up. Well, it you, will be posted. You need somebody. I know that. There's yeah. no problem there. Yeah. I'm not arguing that point. Yeah. That's all. We haven't talked about how it's going to go through the process of hiring. We just talked about getting it on the budget to go forward with the position. Good job, Yes. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike put Mike's, one out, yeah. and, and it's supposed to be... Twelve steps? Yeah, I believe it's supposed to be a public record. I, from what the select board meeting had said, it, once, it, once it had all the corrections, it's supposed to come to everybody so that everybody knows. Right, but the requirements of the position are... Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so... Um, Budget Committee Secretary, if we ever can find one. Um, 2%. Um, so, I'm oh, sorry, wait, I have a question. So, um, so built into this, what is, um, this is how many positions now? Currently? The admin support person? Yeah. It's Selmay's, and it's going to be the town administrator, and it's going to be the bookkeeper. So, it's two positions currently going to three. Right. So you're seeing it in two different lines in the 18 budget, and it's getting combined into one line in the 19 budget. But didn't we just couple that whole thing in the last budget? Like we broke it out so we would be able to see the mm -hmm. different positions? Mm -hmm. So why would bundling it all back up again so there's any visibility into it? So I have no idea this year what like Caroline's increases and Zombie's increases and kind of that. I'll see if it could be extended. So what is what is the? It was cross forward two percent. Thank you. All right, the payroll taxes at two hundred twenty-six. That's because the payroll taxes last year were under budgeted. Most of you are aware of that that issue. Mm -hmm. um, there's a decrease in mileage. Um, Photocopying went up 31%. We have now new commitments due to the MS4 storm water, which we will be having to do a lot of printing and a lot of mailing. Question. So you'll see that down further too. Yes. Okay, your conference and dues. People budgeted 500, but you've been spending more every year, and you're down 500 again. Is that going to be enough money? I'm not sure. What is the conference and dues? Caroline? Conferences and dues are, um, that's been hit particularly lately because of turnover at the transfer station, and it will continue to receive activity for that reason, which wasn't spent as much before. But um, essentially, they have annual trainings of $50 a person annually. Um, there's the annual municipal association conference that I go to, which is $150. Um, that's that's the basic stuff. Then there was some extra this year because um, we hired Ed and Ed wanted to do, he did a couple of um, recycling related workshops. So I don't know whether those would continue or not. There is ongoing training for him that doesn't, um, meetings with a nonprofit that manages recyclables for us that um, does not have a cost associated to it. So um, for the most part, I think we'll be fine with $500. So previously, we didn't have conference and dues for just sanitation departments, and now I'm seeing that we do have it in this year. It's so it used to come out of the executive line, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, so now we're trying to move it back into the department, except this would be... I'm not sure that it actually did get moved. Um, 
You can check that. I, I remember we talked about it. I don't recall whether it's not worth it. Okay, so there you go. Okay, thank you. Um, on the professional services line, <clears throat> you only spent um, as a credit committee for today $1,700. Um, what's the other $24,000 slated for? Professional services oh, and legals are, are yeah. together. You have to. There's no numbers on the lines. Yeah, they combine them. They There's been a lot of combining of lines. So it used to be that engineering and legal were separate lines, and now they've been combined into professional services. Didn't we just go through this whole process of, of splitting everything out? We're putting it all back so, together? So it changes according to who's on the board. You right. know, Sus Suzanne really, like, she created the full-time salary in the police department line because it creates a lot of, um, it's kind of efficient to look at one thing at a time and then create reports when you want to see a report on what the individual salaries are. It was, it was an effort to make things um, more um, concise and congruent between departments. But then you can have a different select board that feels differently or a different budget committee that requests something different. So it's kind of always in flux. Okay, so what, what is coming out of professional services for this next coming year? There's a number of um, compliance, so legal. Legal is a number of compliance issues. Um, the cable franchise agreement is still under review. Um, and to get a couple of policies through legal. Legal is pretty basic. Professional services um, is engineering, just in case there's a need for engineering. Do you know what those were for? So did you sum those up before, too? I, I think in 17 they were broken out. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. You can, you know, I, you're, I'm not looking at your sheet, I think. It, and I guess for my two cents, I, I really think, I, I don't want to see us go back to lumping everything together. I think we need to see it exactly. stay broken out. So if that's a message that can get back to the select board or whatever, um, you know, we, we, as Kim said, we went through this before. You know, trying to separate everything, and you know, it's it's a lot easier to see. It's a lot easier to follow and follow and know what goes for what, rather than you know all lumped together. So, my two cents on that. I won't ask as many. I won't ask as many questions. <laughs> questions are good because you're not the only one with questions, and then everybody can benefit from the answer. Okay. Yeah, and I'm in agreement with Bill. I think it would be a lot better off to to have the individual lines like it used to be. Okay, so IT hardware, software, and services, we are doing some upgrading on our computers in the office. Um, we're also going to have to, we're going to move the Wi-Fi from downstairs up to the yes. office to get better service on this floor. That, yes. We're going to try to do that as well. What does that mean from downstairs? Okay. No, Nothing, it, because it's our Wi-Fi. It's our wi oh, it's not there. Yes. So it's going to only help us and not yeah. at all affect them. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Um, I'm on page two. Oh, but, contingency. Yeah. Why did you go up in that? That's based on your... Such fun. So it, it, was, it was always intended to, well, in more recent years, the idea was that it's 1% of the previous operating budget. This select board actually took that figure and decided it was more than they thought was probably necessary. So I think it got reduced from 1% down to a smaller percentage. But it's just for the inevitable something that happens. And what are our reimbursable expenses? I see a $4,700 decrease, which I like, but what, what exactly is that? That has to do with um, checks that bounce that ultimately get repaid, or insurance claims that get paid out and ultimately get reimbursed, or FEMA incident, you know, FEMA is actually a separate line, um, but it's just... Um, various expenses that will ultimately get repaid, just okay. to separate them out and recognize that there's offsetting revenue. So although it's in an expenditure budget, it's not it's not taxation because you're always getting it back. So we see revenue on the other side. Um, in, a, in a way, yes. I just have a quick question. I know I, we had asked it um, for end of for the previous um, on the contingency, you show that you haven't spent any of the money yet. You haven't spent the seventeen five forty six. 
No, that's not true. Um, what happens is that um, whatever you spend money on belongs in a category that already exists. So what happens is that as the year goes on, the select board reallocates budget dollars to reflect where you've actually spent it. So it got moved to a vehicle repair maintenance line or a utility line or something like that too, so that you can track where the expenses actually happen so that you can evaluate whether or not that was a reasonable budget line, budget amount for that, that line. So yes, it is expended. Okay, because the, the reason why I ask is maybe something in the little notes line would say where that $17,000 was expended to. We have lots of aspirations for better reporting, yes. Would an example be, in the, for instance, the payroll taxes that it will be allocated once you realize there was more money? That that would come out of that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. For example, we th that's exactly what happened. We um, we signed up for Group One retirement, and I don't know if this group is aware of that. That um, the non-police full-time employees were um, given Group One retirement. It was not transparent at the time, despite due diligence, that apparently Group 1 employees are subject to Social Security withholdings, whereas police and fire are not. So it was set up incorrectly. We didn't properly budget for payroll taxes, so contingency money got moved over to cover that when we figured it out. Do you have a total figure of what that was? It's actually in 2017 funds. It didn't affect 2018. Except to say, the expense, so we've paid for it in 2018, but we were aware of it in 17. So the month, so it's in the auditor's report that that amount of money got moved back into 17 um, funds. Um, but it's about $12,000. Because it was transfer, station, police. <coughs> It was, um, no, 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 so, so police are, are police, they're group two. It was, um, it was me and highway, and then um, for a short time, the second highway person. Yeah. So can I just ask a follow-up? So Caroline, you said that it shows up as zero in contingency because it's actually going to reflect in the line it was spent, which makes perfect sense. But where would that 12000 show? Because I don't see anywhere. So it's going to show up as, um, so, so if, if I understand you correctly, so payroll taxes are in the department in which they're spent. So my payroll taxes come out of executive payroll taxes. Um, it may not look overexpended because um, the budget money may or may not in your report have been moved over to cover it. It also may not look extraordinary because it's what you would expect if you do the math for the payroll taxes to be. But it was under budgeted originally, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Okay, so looking at the figure would look normal, Correct. but the money was not earmarked for right. that. Exactly. But wouldn't I see that in the... Would, yeah, wouldn't you see an over-expenditure, say it was in, you know, I don't know, postage. You would see an over-expenditure in postage if it was budgeted for $200 and we spent 300 That would be $100 from contingency that went So I think you postage. do see it in your report in that you have two center pink lines or two center gray lines. There's what was budgeted in 2018 and then what the rebudgeted amount? Look at the payroll taxes executive. It was twenty-two fifty that was approved on eighteen. <laughs> Revised budget is forty-eight forty-eight. Right. That's it. That's it. That's okay. where it so really. That's where it's doubling. When so they change, when you spot. change okay. to a revised budget, we really don't know unless we look and say, oh, it came out of here where anything came. I would. I personally would rather see that line overspent. And with a notation on contingency saying this is where it came from, then to ha to revise the budget halfway through a process so that we don't know if it was really over budgeted that much or where money keeps getting moved around. So, so, so the report that the budget, the yeah on that one it does yes. Oh, but it didn't report. Oh, what do you mean it didn't report? No, no, no. On some of the other things that I don't see, we. Like she said, she still can't. We can't. Still can't find the whole twelve thousand. I, I think all she's saying is a note that says 
you know, there was a $12,000 error here. So it's, it was paid out of the 17, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which would just make it easier so nobody's trying to figure it out, wasting time. Thank you. All right. But I get it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, town on town clerk salary, again, we're recommending. Well, I still have a question on this first page. I don't understand the full impact. I was a new position on this manager. I want to see the full impact of that in terms of retirement, Social Security, health insurance, and so forth. I don't see it there. If you've got 60,000 one in there, then am I putting those? He's going to be full time for health insurance? So, so all of the so the health insurance is combined um, for for privacy reasons, but but they are but it is budgeted for everything that we expect to have happen. And while that is that salary line is a combined line, the retirement is calculated on the one full time position in that combined line. So what you're seeing for budget numbers for next year? Well, what I'm saying it looks to me like it's a hundred thousand dollars. If you say you're going to put sixty thousand. In, and then you take all these fringe benefits and so forth, you just essentially double it. Right. Well, it's all said and done, regardless which line you're trying to hide it in for, which I don't agree with, legally, but the lawyers say you've got to do stuff like that. Right. Did you calculate in the potential increase in health insurance as well? Because that would be... I mean, that's a variable. The house insurance, if you say he's going to work full-time for it, then you're going to pay full health insurance on that person. I mean, I mean that, that alone gets between twenty five and thirty thousand dollars. But that position already has I mean, it doesn't have anything. No, that, that position as it sits right now is full time and that position is already getting the health benefits. Who before is? the town the admin support personnel. I am now full time and I have health care. Huh? I am now full time and I have health care. You you're saying you're not going to be at all there then? What what? No. You're still going to be there getting? No, no it's or it's not. going to be a different position. See, the, that's a problem. The position has been explained well enough for me to understand what you're changing around and so forth. I want to know the net impact on the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where, as you had this year and then next year. I want to know how much addition is going to be required. Well, you lump the three together or whatever, but you got the fringe benefits and so forth, which are different for the new position compared to what, what you're getting. Or you're still going to be there, you're saying, then you're getting others, but it's, there's not enough information here to really make it clear. The, the fringe clear. benefits are staying the same. They are budgeted. The fringe benefits are budgeted to be the same. It's all subject to change, and the and the select board can move the things. The fringe around. benefits are not staying the same if you put a manager in there. They are. It's, re it's subject to retirement, as is the current position. It's subject to health care, as is the current position. So all that is budgeted. And health insurance and so forth. Correct. And so that's not budgeted to change. Well, so it's all budgeted to change because it's new money. So you're not adding a new full-time position. Correct. So, going to be so there's already going to be. You're not going to pay. No, we are adding a new, new position. Part-time. Running a half time position. Which is not subject to retirement or health care or oh, not payroll taxes. I'm managing a sixty thousand dollars. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Which is combined in a few positions, right? No. 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 But no, can I just say that? I'm confused. It is, it if we have a town manager or a town manager, how are we not have a position, I guess? It's, it's either a replacement Caroline or somebody it's else. It's a replacement position of what we Correct. currently have. We have yes. a town manager? No, no, no. It's a replacement position that Caroline had previously in. Title change. Title right. change now full time. Right? She is. This year. Right she, this year. Um, she is. This year. The, 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 so it's a new year. position this year. This last year. year. The, no. 32 hours we full time. Well, you're considered, thir you were considered, you're just, yes. you're going 40. She went right. 40 hours. Oh, right. I was 32. Okay. Okay. She was 32. Yeah. She was considered full time. She already gets the health care. Yeah. She already gets right. health care. And all, all of the pennies that go with a full time employee. So basically, so we're adding half time employees. The expectation is that right. Caroline is going to be town administrator, so it's not a new position. Or I won't be, and it will be somebody else, and it's budgeted for that same thing. Right. And right. then, but then, so but, your yeah, position but, will go but, but last year there was a town administrator that no. was. No, 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 no. no. We've never okay. had a town administrator. Okay, I know, I understand. So, so 
I guess I'm freaking confused. No, so, no, 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 no. What's happening is, is the position she's in right now is going to change to a position of a town administrator. I understand that, but she, we never had a, her position was never full time, right? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. 32 Just hours 30, is full time. 32 hours, hours is full time since when? Yes. In terms of getting benefits. Right. For benefits. Oh, for benefits. For benefits. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'll shut up for right now, but I'm a little confused about a few things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's good to ask. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, an easy way to explain it is she was 32 hours full time. And now she's 40 hours. Now she's 40 hours because of the workload. Right. The select board gave her extra hours that were not in the approved. Right. But that didn't change benefits. It no, no, I understand that. I'm not asking that. I'm not asking that. It went from 32 to 40. Right. Okay. So the only increase, so that that budget line of that combined salary line reflects an increase of 20 hours of additional part -time. admin support, and yeah. it's part time. Part -time. So what's going to happen is some of the things that you've been doing is going to be shifted to this new person who's going to come in in 20 hours, so right. you will have be freed up to do other administrative things that the fuck board. Yeah, but I'm still a little confused about that. But, but I believe we already have someone that they've already hired for 20 hours a week as a, a temporary as a, as a bookkeeper. As a temp. As a temp. Well, and it's 10 hours. Oh, is it 10 hours, it 10 hours now? Yeah, yeah. Apples because of the amount the hours. It hell. So, so, which is not actually in this budget, Paul. It's... Uh, okay. I got it. Uh, just... So the one, the one variable. To me, it sounds like we're at 20 hours, eight hours, right? Because we're at a part time now for 20 hours, and we're operating her hours eight. So that's 28 hours right now. We're already at. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, town warrants that much extra. I mean, I, I Caroline's position is what the town administrator, but her position was. She's the assistant I'm to the, the administrative board. assistant to the select board, the that's bookkeeper, hours? and the welfare. Forty yes. hours a week. You know what the difference is, Paul, is that you don't have Suzanne working forty hours, fifty hours a week. Exactly. And that's and that's what that's yeah. why yeah. when yeah. other people want exactly. to ask the select board, yeah. they say no because they don't want to work twenty to forty hours. A and week. this is why you're not getting the level of information that you want. Well, that's why I'm it's, asking the question. I'm yeah. Trying to understand the whole picture. Yeah, because it, the original select board description is the overseer of the poor. So. That in the beginning time, that's that was the select board's domain. Uh, was we don't, to do. we don't want to so be at 12 o'clock. So, one so variable so in this equation is if, if, if the position is in Caroline's and it becomes somebody else's, we may see an increased cost in health insurance. Correct. Because right now, this is tailored to her yes. and it shows what this this 81640 is what it would be if she stood into that spot. Or somebody else with the same right, health care right, level. Yeah. Right. But, which is great. Now, what about the 20 hours a week? Where's that? The it's other new. person, the 20 hours a week, that's going to take her old, what her old position was originally titled, but not which, which oh, not the level. It's in that combined line. It's in that 81,000. Yeah. Okay. Take 60,000 out of it, and that's what the other one would get. Sixteen, no, you gotta take, you got to take you got to take her out of there too. Sixteen, six forty, fifty-two hour, fifty-two <coughs> weeks at three hundred and twenty dollars a week. So her, so her um, pension and all that stuff must be on a different line. Yeah. No, retirement is is a separate line. Okay. But you're saying you're not going to pay retirement on that kind of person. It's like no, no, no. no. six thousand. Did, did you say they're, they're doing her though on that line? Mm. It's sixty. It's six thousand seven hundred and sixty-five dollars for retirement yeah, it's a on that position. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I gave up. I'm good. <laughs> 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 I said, "Work late." Why don't you get this figure for six thousand or whatever? <laughs> Are we moving on? Yeah. All right, let's move on. You are All right. not going to be I'll be raising a lot of hell about this. Don't look at me at I didn't do it. Well, I'm telling you. All right. This is not acceptable. Yeah. 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 The way you explained it. Are you talking to me? I I'm didn't explain it. Collectively, I'm talking to well, all of us. Talk we're going to walk out of here, we all accept the responsibility. And if you didn't ask any questions about it, well, then you, you fully understand it. I wish you would explain it to me. We, we have another debate session. It's called Budget Workshop. 
Well, we can debate it some more. Okay, good. This is yeah, the okay. presentation. That's January 2nd. I said it now. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. All right. Other questions, though. All right, can we move on to the yes. questions yes. and registration? On. Okay. Again, our recommendation is 2%. Oh, wait a second. I got that. Uh, <laughs> okay, the tax collector. Pay, pay attention. Let's get going, please. Oh, Go sorry. But the tax collector. The default wait, budget. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. She's still... She's still on page yeah. one. You jumped ahead, but let's do that. On page two. Let's just no, I'm that. trying to get there. <laughs> let's go to finance and administration. So we're on page right. two, right? Yep. So we're on page two. Um, again, for stipend that we do is based on elections. Mm -hmm. um, ballots. Um, the programming of the um, printing good, ballots, yeah. all of that. I guess we're going to remove the uh, training and the voting booths first. I heard of it tonight, so just to tell you. So she said she wants it gone. We'll remove it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's why I wanted a clarification from her to be sure. The the only issue I would have with that is I, I was a little concerned. She said, um, you know, the state mandates training, but I'm not going to go. But we can't tell her what to do. Okay. She's an elected official. But if she, okay. And she's then followed think, by RSA. Then I think we need to make the point that, I mean, what are the consequences if she doesn't take the training? I'm, I'll have to look into that. Okay. Because I, I, that's the first know, I've heard of this, so I'm I think we should, sorry. because well, if she's mentioned. not qualified to be the town clerk, I then agree. what do we do then? So I, yeah. I understand what her point. There might be a waste of time, but I'm concerned that. But well, we know. probably won't remove so, it. It's a good yeah, point. We, we probably won't remove it, but it shows that we put the money there right. and we. Yeah. So okay. I, and, but I think we need to have that conversation yeah. about the liability of not having a qualified person. Right. Yeah. Uh, if they're not taking this well, required that, seminars. Yeah. Correct. Whatever. And that would be a personnel thing between the select board and. Okay. okay. So, so, um, but I guess we will take out the voting booth. Um, that's a good. It's a good point, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay, financial administration treasurer, uh, no change. Uh, I got a question. Elected the official. Yeah, what's, we never had that one before. No, not the treasurer. I know that. The tax collector. I, I'm getting there, Charlie. Charlie, you just, will you wait? I said, I thought you said you. Were, I said treasurer. <laughs> okay, I'm going next. Yeah. Treasurer? That's Vern. No, that's Vern. No, I've never seen it live. Yes, it's oh, been yeah. there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Treasurer. It was yeah. paid last year. Was it buried in another one? No, I don't no. think so. No, it's been 26. Yeah. All right, tax collector, Charlie. Okay, you got a small problem with the default budget. Should be $402 less. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two of. <laughs> It shouldn't be the same as what you're proposing because it you, so you have to go revert. You back have to, to go that. back to 18. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. So we need to have that fixed. Yep. So it should uh -huh. be two o o eight seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two o o eight seven. Thank okay. You. We'll get that fixed. And then the pay payroll taxes would be the same. Would difference. be. Oh yeah, you'd have to down too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is one thirty dollars. Yeah. Um, audit going across the same. Um, Reevaluation all staying the same. Um, personal uh, personnel administration health insurance. Uh, the select board has uh, decided to change the plan um, to the AD twenty, which is a, um, a savings for the town. To um, that would be for everyone who has insurance. If it's a savings, how come it's a forty thousand dollar increase? What's the savings? What is the well? Savings, I the, say? the plan went up. The existing plan went up ten and a half percent. So mm -hmm. the savings is the not ten and a half percent. Right. Um, but it's also still going up because there were plan changes, increased um, plan enrollment, changes. singles going to two family, two family going to family, things like that. Right. So what would it have been if we stayed in the same plan? It was like sixty-eight thousand dollars of an increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many people on that thing? What's up? Um, they're eight. budgeted for eight. eight yeah. Um, any other questions on that page? All right, go page three. Um, <coughs> Paychex services went up 2%. Um, all others, all set. Uh, planning.
anything in zoning? Before we leave there. Okay. There's a math error. Okay. Okay, you, you say that the total for that section proposed change is 1529. But if you add up all the numbers, the 39,000 and all that <coughs> comes up to 40,887. Where are you, Charlie? What, what, what section are you in? We're What's in the, the bottom point? underneath the, the personnel, personnel yeah. administration. Personnel administration. Yeah. I'll I'll check it. 39,345 in that calculation. What's the it's actually 40,000 something. It's 40,000,887. I think it's just you're missing the health oh, no. insurance one. Yeah, I don't think it mattered at the bottom. At the bottom, you've got the right number. The bottom came out pretty good. So where, just, where, where's the error then? I'm confused. Oh, oh, just at the, um, the department level? The department level, at the end of your funding. At the, at the end of your personnel administration. On the 2019 proposed change, proposed. that number of 1529 should yeah. be whatever. It looks like you just didn't add in the 30 yeah, yeah, it looks like you See, didn't this add, is, add in the uh, health insurance. See, this is where you yeah. <coughs> Oh, 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 all right. Yeah. Okay. But it all, page, out, got, it all came out. It all came out in the wash. Right. But the bottom line came out pretty good. All right. Thank you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The planning and um, secretary, it was um, the hourly rate went up, and it was because the person isn't just being the secretary, it's also doing. Um, Postings and notifications as required for um, the position, as in um, sending out notices about um, meetings for the planning board and meetings with the zoning board. So it was an increase of it by the hour instead of 2%. How many hours? I can't answer that. It no. varies depending on the projects, but it's about five hours per meeting, um, but it varies according to whether or not there's a notice of decision to send out and how many um, certified mail, things like that. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Um, there's another one there. There is. Actually, that percentage for the personal investment is a very good It should be like 31% based on um, the revised budget and the new budget. Can you repeat that line? I'm sorry. So the bottom line of the personnel administration, um, the percentage, if, if you're doing percentage um, on the revised budget. I think that percentage comes out good to that number. The numbers were good, it just wasn't in there. All right, I think what we'll just say is yeah. we're going to yeah. check all we'll just check calculations, the calculations, yes. every yes. one of them, and make sure that we'll, uh -huh. we'll send a revised copy when she does that. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, government buildings? No, no, under planning oh. zone. Reimbursement services, five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. He didn't carry that over. That's the difference. So instead of eighteen, it should be five thousand eighteen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because there's, there's no, yeah. it wasn't in there before. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Government buildings, janitor uh, wages up 2%. Um, supplies, um, the town hall supplies, uh, we have um, mats in there, but we also have allocated $1,000 to purchase new chairs for this room here and get rid of these burgundy ones. Can all the stuff go to the new building if it gets loaded up? Can all the stuff go to what? Can you go to the new town hall? Like, town hall. If it gets, if, well, if yeah. It gets I mean, you, you mean if we buy it, will yeah. it go? To, it will go. Yeah. yeah, it's new. I mean, we probably aren't going to want to take these. Oh no, no, no. terrible chairs. No. But yes, yes. I know. Oh, right. Just because, like, we take <laughs> these dollars for you know, can't clean them. Sorry, this um, soft mats no. for that jewelry. Oh yeah. We're not going to just like leave some by the side. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. This was a, a, a suggestion made by the custodian, um, so uh, we agreed to. They're the plastic chairs that can be easily wiped and sanitized and cleaned, and you won't have any more of this um, upholstery. What does that note mean? Half monthly, half bi-weekly? That refers to the mats in the hallway, oh, and they're also mean. downstairs. Oh. That for a certain time of the year, they will replace, be replaced monthly, and then for the other part of the year, um, every other week. Um, it keeps costs down to do it less frequently, but in the winter it requires 
um, more of a turnover because of salt buildup. It's cleaning, not replacing. Correct. It's, yeah. it's, it's the uniform company. Yeah. You rent them and they swap them out however often you want in the change. Um, and the cost is associated with how frequently you do that. Are we going to have the same problem if, so, if we do damage to the mats that we have with the uniforms? It's all in the same account, so yeah. I, I will check on that, but yeah. I believe it will carry on <coughs> okay. all the things in the accounts. Thank you. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's verify that. <coughs> but I would say yes, if it got damaged here uh -huh. on us, we would have to buy pay for it. Um, sewer and water on all of the town buildings. Clearly, we have not been advised of a price increase yet. So, um, <laughs> However, we'll probably I have to look into that. triple it or something. Well, well, I don't know. Um, heat. Um, Heat is going to be staying there. Oh, the electricity, the town hall, it's going at 19% based on this year's service. Um, we're also going to try to see if we can get a uh, energy committee going to kind of look at other means of how we can do. Um, but at this point, that's why we're having the increase. What was the deal with the electricity? Like, I couldn't understand why we bumped it eight thousand dollars, and we used to know it was about half, and now we're we're down to twelve. So whatever. It's, well, that what was it? Suzanne before she left, so I can't explain why she thought it was going to be eighteen. It was based on looking at what the history was. I think for six months or so, she was projecting it to be higher. I think a lot of the problem was with the air conditioner in the summer. Well, we well we did have a lot of problems, yeah. uh, or probably increases due to the. Um, the ACs and um, failing and stuff. So maybe having that fixed and changed, it fixed the, the problem or some of it. Um, so, is, so I'm confused about the proposed change because <clears throat> so the proposed change column is really the proposed change of the appropriation and not the revised budget. Correct. Correct. Okay. So you are confused. <laughs> 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 um, until we get to the end. And then All right, can I go to four? All right. Um. Caroline, do you, know, do you remember what repair and maintenance was for um, Town Hall? Um, $11,500 to replace one of the four ACs in this building. That was a big one. Um, there was also, um, I think it was boiler work done as well. And generator? The generator. The generator. Probably not boiler since the proposal is to put a new one in. Well, right, but I think it had repairs at one point. Oh, okay. Not, not a fix, not a, you know, just repairs, yeah. not a replacement. Um, but 11500 was the biggie. That was the one of four ACs. Yeah, yeah. So we still have three here in this building that are still the, original the, the renovation. Yeah. But am I wrong to, to assume that didn't Bob say he had money left in his budget and was covering the ACs? Correct, yes. And this is another case where, you know, it's not a police expense to buy an AC. It's a building expense. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like it's needed, we could have taken funds from his budget to mm -hmm. allocate, and he no. did have room, like the rebudgeting, they no, moved the but, money around. No, so it's going to show in his that he still has that extra money and not the subtraction of that 11.5 that right. you're We, we can't it. tell you necessarily how money was moved around. Um, the select board chose to keep the department budgets as whole as possible. It wasn't necessary to move money out of the police department, even though he offered that. So. Um, I believe that's probably the other half of contingency, and it could have come from other lines. Okay, so going down, the rest is pretty neutral. Um, cemeteries, we've already discussed with Mark. Mm -hmm. um, insurance is just based on rate increase. Yes, those yeah. are actuals. Yeah. Regional association, the same. Um, we've already discussed police department. Um, I want to bring that back up again. But it, it's still um, there across the board is only one point point three percent. It's it's not it's it's based on two percent increase. However, it's based on their actual current wages. So right. while they were, were they there was a budgeted whatever percent increase last year. Um, 
they got their annual reviews and they were allocated differently. So not everybody got a 2%. So it's not a 2% on top of a 2%. It's, on t it's a 2% on top of a 0% or a 1% or a 2%. So um, that's why. It's, it's, it's 1.3 over actuals, not over last year's budgeted amount. Um. Because we have different uh, numbers of hours of... Well, he reviews his people and bases it. The, he takes the pot of money that he had and he bases his percentages on performance. Okay, so in, in the future, if we did the same thing with our other employees, that same thing would happen? Then? Possibly. Okay. And so I'm confused about that because it's always been, and I said the same thing with the fire department, if it's a 2% increase, it's a 2% across the line. But now I see it's 1.3% for the police across the line. Because of the merit. He doesn't merit. Because he's doing it. That, that's over merit. last year's budget. So it is budgeted that everybody in there would get a 2%. It's the department has discretion whether or not everybody will based right. on evaluations. Yeah. But although it says 1.3, any given hourly rate in that combined line is budgeted for a 2% increase. Um, the 1.3 is over the last year's budgeted amount, not over this year's current amount. One, it's 1.3 1 increase over this year's current amount. And they have different people at different salaries than they were. Well, it wasn't last year's. Somebody's retiring, somebody else is coming in, they have a different salary. Different salary, right. So last they year's police. Increase, but it may not have hit the, the bottom line the same. Last year's police was 3% raise. Merit. <clears throat> Up to 3%. Up to 3%. Was three, wasn't it was yeah, 3 yeah. across. But it doesn't mean that everyone. No, no, that's not, not, not saying. No, no, no. So what. And, my problem with that is that because now we're hearing that our salary, our starting salary for police officers continue to stay at 39.9. If we don't add that 2% or that 3% to keep us up, getting up where we need to be, that, that's why we're having a hard time. Yeah, I and I think that we I should. It's not, based on, it's not based on the uh, person who has that job. It should be based on that job. Yeah. It, it, it does, position. It, it position it, and in 39.9 should have gone up 3%. You know, yes. if it stays, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, if it yeah, stays there, we're never going to be, gonna be what we need yeah. to be. Uh, that, so I'm going to does. work with Bobby on that because yeah. I think yeah. that we need to, Something's not right there. We yeah. need to move it up. You know, employee-wise, if he doesn't believe it, they deserve the 3% based on their performance. I'm okay with that, but that position has to go up. Not Correct. that person. To have that Put the money so you have it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, just making sure that the, especially with starting salaries, oh, yeah. we have to keep up and, and keep it moving, or you'll never be competitive. Well, the police and that's what they're finding. Well, then, you know, and it costs yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah. to, to, to train them, to right. send them to the academy. Yep. Yep. Okay, so. Um, so, like I say, we've already discussed most. Any more questions on the please to move forward? Sure. Okay. Um, fire department, again, we uh, discussed them as well. Is there any questions on the fire department that wants to be brought up tonight? tonight? Tomorrow yep. Night. Tomorrow night, 6.30, uh, at so the fire station. we talked about um, this increase, and in it. so it's not a 2% increase for them. For the, for the what the uh, the, the increase the of ten thousand? It's not just like across the board. It's an hourly increase as well. It's not hourly because it's not calculated hourly. So it's not a two percent because they don't get an hourly wage and they don't get a stipend either. They get a point system. Right. So it's kind of hard to apply one system to a completely different animal. Um, so I would say that that's a market increase. But you, but you can't boil it down to an hourly rate because they, they take the quarterly earnings, they take, they take the annual amount that's allocated, they divide it into a quarter, they determine how many training events and um, calls that happened in that quarter, um, they develop a point system which varies by quarter and then whoever shows up for those things, points are even, point values change per quarter, they also change per event according to how many people show up. You know, a, a point at an event where 10 people show up, it's worth a different amount than a point where two people show up. So they, they take a quarter amount and then they divide it. And, and as strange as that sounds, it's not uncommon. It's 
I've asked him, I, someone asked me to ask him for yeah, but, his formula, yes. and I have asked him if he is going to supply it. Yep. So maybe you guys can mention it um, tomorrow night, too, just as a reminder. I can make it tomorrow night. Okay, well, then someone can ask it if they want to. But I did ask him for it. Yeah, because of when he was at the meeting here, he did make the, the point that it's $11 sometimes an hour that they get, and sometimes it's... It depends on how many people show up that yep. quarter. Yep. So it could be up to eleven dollars. I, I just I, I I can't help but say I find odd we're doing a market adjustment for um, the fire department and we can't keep police officers and there's no market adjustment there. So I, I consider that maybe we should split this between the departments and try to bring up both departments. Um, if the police had come to the board of selectmen and asked for a market adjustment, they didn't. But they came in with 3%, didn't mm -hmm. they? Yes, they did. They did. Okay. He also just hired, the select board also just hired a new officer at their last meeting at an hour, he's already certified, and they hired him at an hourly rate higher than what they had been doing. Mm -hmm. So in the budget amount for full-time salaries, um, it's budgeted for a 2% increase, but also the people who have lost um, ha were more senior people. So it allows them the flexibility to hire already certified staff, but it also gives them the flexibility that if they can't find certified staff and they're hiring somebody fresh and new, that they can raise that rate within that budget amount. Right now they can because now they, they, have can. The, they have the situation that they're in. Yeah. But right. if it was no people leaving, you wouldn't have that flexibility. Oh, correct. Mm -hmm. so. I, I just feel like this is a little unequitable across the whole town um, staff, you know, that one department is getting a significant increase and everybody else isn't. I'll keep going. But I guess to that point, I would say they've historically been way, way underpaid. So, you know, I can see giving them more money than anybody else because we're still only getting them up to half of where they should be or you know it's it's we're not getting them to where they should be but it's it's an improvement so so, so he's going to give us what their hourly rate was i mean what he's going to give you his formula um once he gives us that if we have more questions and looking for more information we certainly can do that you know we can ask yeah. him for additional information i'll if i remember to do it tomorrow night i'll ask him because i believe we also asked um how many people didn't you, as someone asked about how many people go, usually go to a call? Depends on the time of day. Yeah, or that's night. what I'm saying. Or yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But it's, the salary is also for all firefighters, except for the, well, it's, the chief's in there too, because it's a, he, he gets his calls now. No, yeah. he has his chief salary and he gets he his fire calls. And he gets his calls. part of that salary line. So we're talking between 20 and, and uh, 25 employees in that 10,000. No, no, not not well, not at every fire. I think it would be helpful if we can look at the, the point system that he has and, and okay. get a sense for yep. yeah, it may be eleven dollars in one, but it might be three in another. Exactly. Like, yeah. How does it balance out? And, exactly. And just because right now it's it's just a black box. It's all. Yeah. All right. So going on. We, um, we did increase the um, building inspector, inspector's hours based on the activity that we have been having in town, I'm trying to um, get some people to <laughs> follow the rules. So we have to have him go and inspect and then re-inspect and re-inspect. So we are working. How many hours is that, Denise? Is it 10? Um, per pay period, he he's yeah. currently budgeted for five, five hours a week, so I believe that reflects up to six now. Yeah, yeah, he's got an additional hour uh, per pay period. And and when he goes out on his health calls, is he getting the same amount of pay as he would get if he was doing a build inspector? He's paid as a salary employee based on five hours a week. Does he have many health calls? We get um, a half a dozen a year or so. Um, so we discussed already 
the highway department with them here tonight. Um, street lighting, um, sanitation. Ambulance, I'm down in the middle of page eight. Yep. Um, this is based on the new contract, which is a two year contract that we just signed on Monday night. They are also going to start supplying us with reporting on their activity in Rollinsburg. Um, animal control, 2% increase. Um, general assistance. Uh, community, community assistance organizations. Um, we had increased, we had added one. You added meals, uh, meals, meals on meals, meals for a thousand dollars. We have. Do you remember how many it was? We have that people receive in town. It was Probably higher than I thought. Yeah, yeah it was. It was yeah. So it's to us. It's a. Yeah. It was worth uh, yeah, it. It was mm -hmm. a lot more than we were expecting. Um, I bet. And so everything else on the, um, um, <clears throat> for welfare is staying the same. <coughs> We've talked about rec already. Mm -hmm. We talked about library. Um, there was, uh, you guys were notified of a change in the library that reflects in here correctly now. Oh, it does in this one? That's 78215, right? Oh, okay. I'm looking at my old one. Yeah, okay. have, yeah. I didn't print That's off the other. Did you see the old one? It was nine hundred dollars less. It was a difference of nine hundred. It was nine hundred for rent. Oh, a change in rent. Yeah, she sent an email explaining. It was it. transposed. It was transposed. Yeah, it was eighteen nine, and it should have been nineteen eight. Nineteen eight. Yeah. Um, a lot of changes there. Um, Do you find that the rental assistance is used at sixteen fifty? Um, it's actually been down over the last couple of years. Um, however, we really had a catastrophic case this year, um, whereby we were motelling a family um, for longer than usual. And so, while we haven't been expending it over the last few years, uh, you know, and we're lucky that it didn't go on for as long as it could have gone on. Um, it's just one of those things where one case can blow you out of the water really quickly. Um, under the right circumstances, you have to put a family in a motel, which can cost a lot of money really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, if you're so lucky, under the you long mean, circumstances, you mean you have to put a family. Right, and it could go on for a long time. It, That's it, the town's the, responsibility because yeah. there are renters in the town, or homeowners, or renters or homeowners. It depends on the circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. But the goal with with the goal is never to motel. People. The goal is, if they need it, to get them in the shelter, but shelters are full. So, motelling is a last resort for when you need to provide housing for people. It is 26 cents. Um, it's tw I'm sorry, it's 25 cents um, if, you, if all the warrant art, capital warrant articles pass, um, the capital improvement ones, um, not culverts and reval, but the ones that come from CIP. That's an additional 25 cents. Um, if um, and then so so just anecdotally, a hundred thousand dollars without any kind of offsetting revenue costs three and a half cents on a tax rate. Very very approximately. That you know. So is that considering offsetting revenue? Because okay. yes. So 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 a hundred thousand dollars is without offsetting revenue. Um, but those other. 25 cents and 26 cents um, does put the revenue. So, so that's um, that's um, that's a formula with the valuation on one side, and then um, the operating budget plus capital items um, plus what you're going to put in CIP um, minus revenue. So, so the um, the tax. What's um, the net let me, increase then? Um, I believe it's seven and seven point eleven percent. No, the net dollar increase. Oh, I couldn't tell you that, but you should have it on your form. No, no, bottom. it's 194. There's a mistake in math here. It's $194,019. So would you take that and, and divide that by our assessment and come up with a number? Sort of, kind of. But um, 
it's more complicated than that because it depends on revenue too. Right. Um, because if I asked what the um, what the net was. So, so the net is twenty five cents. Like twenty. No, like, I'm sorry. The, the net increase in dollars, which you don't know. That that I didn't calculate. Like, but I, I do have a spreadsheet that does that. But um, I I don't have those figures off the top okay. of my head. Okay, I have numbers. My numbers came to one hundred one hundred ninety four thousand thirty two dollars for the uh, change in the budget, and then you subtract <coughs> almost thirty thousand. For the increased revenue, and you come up with 164,033. You divide that by 280,000, and you come up with 58 and a half cents right. per thousand for the operating budget. Yeah. And I went to what I know for what they supposedly have for warrant articles is 179.4 going into SIP, 71.9 that's going into purchases. Two, uh, 20,180 for rev, uh, revaluation and 10,000 for Calvert. That comes up to 281,480 divided by that, and it's another dollar. So, could you share that with me? Because I, you know, you and I are disagreeing on, on that net impact. So, yeah, I want to make sure we're going by what the school had given us as a net impact, how they figured their. Decrease. So, so the equation is is kind of sort of the same, but there are different, you know, implications. Of diff, you know, so I, so I want to see. I would like to see how you calculate that because I have. If everything passed, I have fifty one cents. So I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Okay, we're taking them, putting one hundred seventy nine. Okay, can you send that to me? Like what? Yeah. You, yeah, let's let's not do it right right you know, I will. But that would be a big difference between a dollar fifty eight and fifty one cents. Correct. Yeah. So that's why I want to straighten I will, that out. I will. He won't. I will. Jesus. These war. These Warren articles. That's it. Can you? Could you? Is it okay? If he emails his numbers out so we can all look at it and then Carolyn can go over it. Okay. I will do that. I'll give them to you. He doesn't touch a computer. I figured that. Motion to adjourn. Email is what? He said. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, tomorrow night, 6 30. If you guys review this and get a comment and have questions, please do not hesitate to send me an email with your questions so I can be prepared with an answer for you on our next meeting. We'll take Second. 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 Yeah, so feel free to email me. Thank you.